churches. January 20th, the day the devil was buried at sea, they burned his nutsack and they made him fucking drink cum cum juice. That's the come after the come. You fucking put it in the freezer. You save it. You ice cube it. You make the bitch eat it in the corner with <laughs> handcuffs. You ever know made those? You you put a bitch in the corner with handcuffs and you whack your... off in the ice tray and you put it in the fucking freezer for a couple hours and it gets all fucked up and then you <laughs> you never did that. What the, did you people grow up? What's happening, you beautiful motherfuckers? The church of what's happening now? Mick Bencourt, guest of the fucking evening this evening. Lee Syatt, the flying Jew. What up, you bad motherfucker in the red shirt? What's that? Yeah. Oh, my God. I, I couldn't sleep last night. I got fucked up. That star of death was on fire last night, Doug. <laughs> yeah, it was. I ate three of those motherfuckers. I have no idea how you did that. I had that. a candy, and then I went home and started smoking hash out of a fucking pipe. <laughs> by 8 o'clock, I think by 7.30, my head was fucking spinning, right? I was falling asleep on a, on a chair, so my wife put a pillow and a blanket on top of me, and the baby came over and ripped the blanket off and ripped the pillow off. Like, wake up, you fuck. No sleep in the living room. Seriously. Oh. Today she hit my keys. <laughs> I couldn't really go to jiu-jitsu today. My car keys were missing. I couldn't fucking find them. My she wife figured out them. that your keys are like, he always leaves with these. My so. wife found them in the fucking grill under the oven. No. God, wow. I had no car till fucking three o'clock. I walked to the park and I walked with two thirty-five pound kettlebells like a jerk off <laughs> to the park. I'm gonna be sore as fuck tomorrow. Hammies on fire. She hid the fucking keys on me today. So yeah, you know, it was one of those days. What's up with you, baby? Well, boy? you, I, I was up at six a.m. Oh, just, I was fucked up. And I mean, he, he, you called me and you tried to convince me to go to Denny's to get milkshakes sure, at stoned. six a.m. Fuck yeah, it's five. Had you been to bed yet or no? Yeah, I slept like a oh, sad, but that's the least of your problems on these edibles. You sleep like a motherfucker. Something about them yesterday that woke me up though at three a.m. Yeah, you I was still high as you fuck. You know what it's called? Hunger. That's what woke you up. Pretty you much. You told me yourself. You woke up and ate 19 fucking wheat waffles. Four waffles, yeah. Four waffles. Four full-size waffles? And no, the Eggos. And, 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 wow. And, and, and with sugarless fucking maple syrup. Sugar-free syrup. I told him to cut my eyeballs out. At three in the morning? Now, at three in the morning. <laughs> he was drinking it like a fucking thing of water, the spring water. He was drinking that maple syrup. Look at you. I called him up. I'm like, come on, I'll take you to Denny's. Pick me up. Let's go get a milkshake and a Grand Slam. Well, you didn't open with that. Bacon. What, what were we going to do first? We're going to smoke a fucking hash joint and smoke some reef. It's <laughs> well, it was still get high. We're going to want before. the Denny's fucking sober. The only way to go no one goes there. The, they charge you double. Yeah, you don't go to Denny's sober. <laughs> That's for fucking Gentiles. You go to Denny's, you go fucked up. So you don't remember. But the the other <laughs> fucked up thing about you, Joe, is uh, like I would have gotten ready. A year or two ago, and like been in my car, and he would have called me and be like, "Don't worry about it, dog. No, We're gonna no, Denny's. You don't want to go to Denny's." I end up eating Cheerios with skim milk, like a fucking <laughs> half a fag. <clears throat> the baby, the doctor. You put anything on the Cheerios or no? Nah, really, just dry. Not even a little sprinkle of skim milk, sugar. Whatever that shit is. Nah, nah, you can't put that. I eat sugar in the morning. And the rest of the day, I want fucking popcorn and lollipops and shit. Yeah. I gotta so watch. That's the first thing you go. If you fuck sugar, around with yeah. breakfast, you your day's ruined. You fuck around with sugar in the morning, you're fucked. So you could eat sugar like a two or something just to give you a little boost in a protein shake. I'll put a little sugar on a protein shake. Really? Why not? You're supposed to. A little salt, a little fucking. Wow. You season your protein shakes? You gotta dope them up sometimes. You know what I'm saying? You gotta dope, you gotta dope everything up. You can't eat it like that out of a can. You know, Progresso's not a bad clam chow. You gotta dope it up. Campbell, not a bad clam chunk. That's you your, gotta dope it up. I think that's your favorite thing. Even back to Mad Flavors World, you were doping up steaks. He took me to 7-Eleven and taught me how to dope up their Italian sub. <laughs> sure. You ever What'd you put on there? Listen, you take that Italian sub that looks fucking... One thing about Subway that this fucking guy, and nobody believes me, is that all their cold cuts, all their cold cuts are made from turkey products. So when you get the pastrami, you're really eating the fucking turkey's liver. It's like, yeah, it's gel. Yeah, it's gel, yeah. and it looks like pastrami. So, but 7-Eleven, go in there and get the Italian early in the morning. You take that Italian, you take it home, you take that fucking terrorist lettuce they put on it, and that tomato, that, that's, you take it off, and you put the oven on bro, and you put that oven on. Oh, You put fuck. that sandwich in the top, you take it out, you put fresh lettuce, vinegar and oil, salt and pepper, a little oregano, and a motherfucking crushed red pepper. What? And you got yourself a tremendous Italian sandwich, and it's not bad. I did it one time about a year and a half ago because somebody told me on the East Coast, they go, bro, you go to 7 Eleven and eat. I'm like, come on. They go, not the hot dogs and shit, but if you're in a bind, I was doing a play. And I was in a bind one day, and I said, yeah. let me see if it's true. I got the chicken salad on wheat bread. I didn't shit blood. <laughs> you know, I didn't get purple. Didn't I didn't die. get sick. I mean, if you get egg <laughs> salad, you deserve to be shot. Oh, forget it. Yeah. You know, if you get egg salad, sushi. You might, yeah, sushi at 7 Eleven. You're going to be fucking, <laughs> you're going to end up in a hot. 
<clears throat> I know this fucking guy got sushi from Salmon. Did no, I did not. From there's a sushi place by where I live on Laurel Canyon. I went there one called of the Seven Twelve. <laughs> Yeah, and he's <laughs> sick at his house, and he wants to blame it on the edible. You know, you know the brownies house. you gave your yeah, yeah, yeah. your family no, member? No, no, no. I gave him different ones. <laughs> no. He gave. He took home Marie Eat. He took home Auntie Dolores stuff. Okay. I gave him Auntie Dolores. It's Dolores. same strength. No, I gave you... Kryptonite? The Devil's Wrath. Yeah, I gave And I, he, gave it, he gave me a full one, and, and I had never had them before. I went home and had sushi, and I was on the couch for like three hours, and I finally made it to the bedroom, but I flipped over... And I felt I felt nauseous. <laughs> I puked on my bed. No, right next to it. Like I, I, I took all my concentration not to puke on the bed. I puked right next to it, but <laughs> I couldn't even I make it to with, the bathroom. You say I did. He's made me puke. The fucking edible. He's made me puke three you times. Ate, you you ate Seven Eleven sushi. No, it wasn't Seven Eleven. Like, Listen, I smoked a joint. This is Then I drank a gallon of Korean, gasoline, yeah. and that fucking joint made me sick. This guy will go into those <laughs> McNation joints. Where they're Korean, but they're really making sushi. No, he don't know. I won't, get, he, I won't get sushi at Korean places. Yes, you do. I know. I got. You do. I got. I've I went to a Korean place to get dumplings, and he got mad. No, nah, I do. Get it. <laughs> What's wrong with dumplings? Everyone we makes just dumplings. You want to go to war against them with the fucking movie, <laughs> and you're going to a Korean place. This is what I'm talking about. He don't think with his fucking head. Uh, he'll go to like a Japanese place and get like Korean food. He does everything backwards. He's going to get sick one of these days, and he eats hummus and shit out these terrorist places, these <laughs> baba ganoush and all that shit. Wait till he's shitting blood. I can't wait till he calls me up from the hospital one day. My liver blew up. For the me the seafood's the shit you got to work uh, worry about yeah, completely, really? man. Especially from seven. When I was driving trucks back in Chicago, my breakfast in the morning was two chili cheese dogs, a large bag of Doritos, and one of those triple gulps, whatever the biggest gulp was, full of Mountain Dew with two packs of Marlboro Reds. Like a, just a fucking caveman. <laughs> just like Because when you're smoking Marlboro Reds oh. at 7 in the morning. Yeah, in between Chili Dogs, Doritos, and Mountain Dew, and I'm coming in at a sweet, sexy 242. I'm in a box truck, so all the smoke's just, there's no filtration oh, of the tremendous. smoke. Just reek. Tremendous. Everything smells. Even your nutsack goes chili right through the fucking jeans. Showing up to someone's house. Hey, I got to bring this inside. When I used to work... <laughs> What's that club on the south side? The one that I went used KJ to go, Riddles. Riddles. When I used yeah. to work Riddles, they used to put me in a hotel that there was one of those Japanvilles next to it, like sushi, San Mai. Like what's oh, that? like a Benihana? Like a Benihana, and they had sushi. And I would go over there. Why is it called Japanville? Because there's one it. Asian restaurant? <laughs> yeah, it was like Japanville. It was just a little thing, and it wasn't bad, but I'd always get the white tuna, and I'd get sick of the dog. Really? And the guy would say to me, I, I don't feel good. And he goes, what did you eat? I go, I went to that sushi place. I had the... The chicken teriyaki, but I had a couple of rolls of sushi. He's like, let me answer something. Show me the ocean. Why <laughs> yeah, exactly. are you eating yeah, that yeah, shit? Yeah. And I, I thought about him. Well, he's right. White too. It's all white fish out of the, the lake. The fucking, uh, yeah, it's white fish out of the lake. That shit in Arizona and Tempe at the improv, everybody, we used to get sick upstairs. Yeah. The oh, you could eat sushi. Everybody oh, got sick. Oh, yeah, I never get sushi. Ralph, in man, man. <laughs> everybody got fucking sick eating that shit. You get sick on sushi, it's oh. one of the worst sicks you will ever be. And you were lucky. You just ate that. Bad shit, like a day old. It wasn't. Apps after a while, like they had it in the back next to the dogs and shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they got confused. Maybe they gave you a piece of dog and told you it was eel. <laughs> I don't get eel. I get tuna. Same difference. I mean, you don't know. You don't know what the fuck you're eating when you go to a sushi place, unless you're a fisherman. You don't fucking know what you're eating at a sushi place, yeah. all right? You order and they tell you whatever. They can tell yeah. you whatever. You know it's that imitation crab meat rolled up in a California roll. They cut it. And they put mayo in them and, out here. It's gross. Yeah. East what Coast, it's just crab. They put mayo in it. They make like a crab salad. It's disgusting. Yeah. They, I it's, think it's the same thing with the wine, too, when people are like, oh, you can taste the tannins and the hint of oak. Ah, it's, it's fucking I hear wine. the best wine is Trader Joe's $2 oh, wine. Yeah, two buck chuck, man. Get it, get it, Get down on it. That whole wine thing. It's bullshit. Drives me <laughs> crazy since I was a kid. You mean you don't, you don't have a favorite uh, selection? Bordeaux. <laughs> you know, Pinot Noir guy? <coughs> I hate people who get the glasses. <coughs> I think I get the glasses for everything. Yeah. When I was a kid, I used to go to this guy's house. He was a great kid. I loved him with all my heart. I still talk to him. But whenever girls came over, he'd always ask them, do you want wine? And, and I would sit there and I'd be seething. I just give them the fucking Budweiser. Let's go. What the yeah, fuck? Yeah. We're all going for the same result here. 4 a.m., you rip the box yeah. of Franzi open, you get the silver <coughs> aluminum foil, and you squeeze the wine out. He used to get come down with the wine glasses, 
I wanted to break him over his fucking head. Like, when I see somebody drinking wine out of a wine glass, <laughs> I really want to break it over the head. Not in a restaurant. You, you got to do you what do you do the pinky do. up? That whole thing drives me. You don't have like a whiskey glass at home? <clears throat> no. You do the thing, you sit, you got to look at the waiter, nod to no. him like this is okay. No. It's all such a no. shitty dog and no. pony show. When I was a waiter, they would have people come in and teach classes, so we would sound like we knew what we were talking Horrible. about. But we'd always just pick like a medium-priced one, not to pick the most expensive one, not the cheapest one, and just say that was the best. And tag an extra fin on it. Yeah. Put a market price next to it. White it out. These motherfuckers don't know nothing today. You know, your menu spec. You just tell the guy, I want them to use his menu. You just keep fucking working. You put like a market on like a deck of cards. <laughs> and then there you put market price on the wines. You just go to like a 445 while you're eating. And that's your menu, Lisa. Yeah. You make four of them ready just in case you get a table of four. Little MP. Mm-hmm. I miss being a server sometimes. Sure you do. What do you miss about it? It was great money. Especially really? I was in college. I mean, I went home one Christmas break uh, and I worked. And I made two grand in like a week and a half. And I was like Holy 20, shit. 21. I worked at Legal Seafoods. I don't know if you've been back to Boston. It's like a not a, not a cheap seafood place, but not like $200 a plate either. So like a kick up from Red Lobster? A little, couple kicks couple up. Couple kicks up. It was kicks. pretty good. It's pretty good. It's what a, did it's we a get? East Coast chain. I wasn't there, no, but it was, it was my favorite. Clams on a half shell, mussels. But I hate lobster, and I would always say whenever anyone would come in, "What should I get? Lobster, because it's fucking expensive." You hate lobster? I no. I haven't tried it in years. Maybe if I tried it again, I'd like How it. How did you eat it? They always just steam it with butter. That's you all. Like, you like fucking butter? I mean, butter. Who doesn't like, like butter? Fucking Dip it in juice. drawn butter. No, I've I've done it, and what it's about just lobster. Those new things they got in those trucks, the lobster sandwiches. Lobster rolls? Oh, oh delicious. Toasted bread they on a nice like roll. 13 bucks for like fucking two ounces. You get it cold or hot? Because I think you can get hot I get lobster. Them, I like them both. Mayonnaise. I like yeah, them yeah. Both. Nice little fucking celery in it. Nice. Yeah. Little lobster roll. Yeah. Fucking tremendous in that little ro- ro- uh, There's one guy. The lobster in, truck, I think it's called. There's a lobster truck yeah, right yeah. in there from Boston. Then there's another one that I had. The Cajun food. There's oh, guy that guy, with, and he stands out. Take a sample. Yeah, take a sample. That has, guy's a has, fucking. I, I just got the black beans and rice. Yeah. The red beans and rice. There's That's one that you'd hate, and it's which, disgusting. Which one? Sushi burritos. <laughs> oh, they make a burrito size sushi, sushi roll. It's disgusting. What? It's called like jogasashi or something. Jogasaki. Some of this shit is not necessary. <laughs> like, why would you do that? It's, it's, it's like gross. A, it's like a oh Dunkin. I gotta put a turkey no. and a Dunkin and a fucking <laughs> a turkey and a Dunkin. A and I can never figure that out. That's like my Rubik's cube. Chicken duck I turkey. I sit there at two in the morning. And go, who the fuck would shove Listen. a dunk a duck up a fucking turkey's ass? And now they're really going crazy. They're shoving snakes inside a duck, inside a dog, inside a turkey, <laughs> inside a fucking. Uh, well, you're convinced. You're, you, when I told you that I uh, that my girlfriend got a dog. You said I should have her just take the dog to like Panda Express for ten bucks. This little pie. every time I would bring it up, be like, when is she gonna take that dog to Panda Express? <laughs> and trade it in for a number four on a Thursday. They'll give you fucking eight nine bucks for a fucking dog. Right there, always walk. You can bring him to the back, just bang on the door and tie him around the thing. The guy will put you gotta pop down. the tires of the delivery truck. Truck didn't make it this week. I robbed a Chinese delivery guy once, like in nineteen eighty five. Oh. We were hanging out at 88th Street Park, and some guy pulls over. He says, excuse me. Oh, no. Do you know where? <laughs> so why would he do that? Oh, my God. Mistake number one. Oh, he's why? Like, do you know where? Whatever it is. And we're like, what? <laughs> yeah, down the corner. And we made him no. stop. And when he was looking, it was one of those places where he had to walk in and look deep. Yeah, yeah. And like 13 was oh, really Oh, you told me this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we got in this car, and we started fucking delivering some of the Chinese food. That's where it got fucking crazy. Wait, you made his runs? We delivered like three stops. <laughs> we took the rest of the Chinese food and ate it and just left oh. the car parked on like 64th Street Field. Why would he deliver the food? Cops, $150. He had oh, it. they paid in cash. When you're fucking 18, you know. Yeah. $150, $150. You just That's like in. 10 grand. No, they didn't pay in cash. We told them to pay cash. And what did you do with the car? We dropped it off. <laughs> we knew a, everybody in North Bergen. A horrible mistake. Horrible mistake. It's like mistake. walking up into a dark park, like four guys on a bench going, hey, guys, anybody got changed for 100 yeah, Like, yeah, what are on. you doing? Like, there's a, there's a register in the park in the middle. There's a <laughs> guy with change. <laughs> so what are you doing? He's, he's waiting he, for He's you. in the alley. You go follow Weren't you guy. a Chinese delivery guy for a while? I was a Chinese delivery guy in Boulder, Colorado. I worked at that restaurant in Boulder. It's a Chinese place. They were Vietnamese. <laughs> <laughs> they were Vietnamese. They pissed me off when I found out. They lied to me the whole time. I was a customer for three years, and at that time I was already in. But it was when I was really fucking like in bad shape. I had the apartment. I was divorced. 
and they would deliver Wednesday, I would get the kid. I would get my daughter, and they'd deliver the Chinese food. And one day they showed up, and I looked at the guy, and I go, hey, man, I don't have the money. He goes, just come by later, talk to us. That's how cool he was. Wow, that's he a square move, You know how embarrassed I was? And uh, he goes, listen, man, you've been eating with us for years. Anytime you want to order, put it on the tab. Wow. And uh, and then I fucking, it was 95 to be exact, the year that the Houston Rockets won the series. They were gambling motherfuckers, these Chinamen. These Vietnamese were gambling. Were you taking the their whole family. No, I went in there one day, and they're like, hey, we well, part of the pool. You win the pool. You, you got Houston. You hit the number? I won, and they were, like, laughing at me. We got this guy. You got Houston Rocket. You got Houston Rocket. I came to the team. And I kept going in, and they kept winning and winning and winning. No shit. And finally they won. I think I won 500 bucks. I, but the, I used to deliver Chinese food and sell Coke. So that was my cover. I used to work for a sports betting service from August to February 1st. Once February 1st came, you were unemployed. It was fucking pulling teeth. You'd yeah, go no one's betting baseball. He would, bet, he would pay you six, seven hundred, but you just made calls for eight hours a day to people. Oh, you had to hustle the phones? Yeah. Is it yeah. just basketball and hockey it's, until April? Yeah, after football, it's pro basketball, <coughs> and baseball hasn't started. March is good because of March madness. March, you still have a little bit of life. But once, I mean, once football tapers off, it's 50% of your business. Yeah. So if you were making 10000 a week, you're going to make five now. And it's basketball, so you have a good march. Once college basketball is over, you got baseball and pro basketball. That takes you till June. But those summer months, he would pay 300 a week. He'd say, come in. It's 1 to 3 in the summer, like 1 to 4, 1 to 5. Wednesdays and Thursdays are off or summer, Tuesdays and Wednesdays are off. But in the winter, you work six days a week, and you had Wednesdays off. I had to do my, everything on Wednesday. You have no idea what life, you know how it is. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. Out of here. But, dog, in the, in the off season, you were supposed to put money away, and then they would send you checks. Like, the guy had it down. He had the business down. He didn't want none of his people out there starving. So he'd go, look, during the year, you're making ten grand a week. Put two away. Yeah. So in June, you got money. He would, you put it in a trust account that he'd get for you and shit, and they mail you the money every week. I didn't do that. <laughs> I fucking, I'll take it now. I took it now. I took the big lump sum yeah, and snorted yeah. it. I had this dealer. His name was Vince Wilson. I loved him with all my heart. He would deliver to me. You know those guys that you owe him? Like, I would call him, and he'd go, you got my money? Yeah, come on. And he'd get there, and he'd go, let me see how much you got, Vince. I go, no, no, no. You told me. You told me, Doug. What do I owe you? 1400 I had him up to like 2200 at one time. And he would still give it to me on a Friday night. I get, if I gave him like a hundred bucks, were you getting a ball? I was getting a ball every time I seen him. Every time. Wow. And what was <clears throat> what would you say? It's ninety five. So what was that about? Two hundred. Two hundred. Wow. Seventy five. I saw my uh, L.A. drug dealer Friday night at the comedy store. <laughs> no shit. Well, the bar, there was there's a manager at the comedy store as a coke fiend, and I introduced him to him, <laughs> and I go into there and I give the manager a hug. He goes. Your buddy's on his way here. I go, who? He goes, your buddy, D-Man. I go, come on. And as He's as still was, in the game, huh? Still in the fucking game seven years later. Wow. That's Picks, a long run, man, if you're he's, selling. He's a professional. He's a professional. I know somebody That's who lives rough. on his block. Okay, I know somebody who's lived on his block. Einstein. Oh, wow. He's still on in the same spot? Still in the same spot. Right? How many people you think, think hey, about it, he's been, tried to fucking he's jack that, him? He's been at that place for 10 years. No shit. It's a bad mistake if you yeah, try to jack that Yeah, that's what boy. I'm saying. Like, that if boy, you, if you go to that boy's house, you're going to get a cold away. What does he have? Yeah. Just a ton of guns? He's but black, you know what I mean? You never bad to the bone, and bigger than he's ever been. He would have been playing pro <laughs> football now. They, got, they shot him in the legs twice. Uh, yeah, you're messing with the wrong guy. How I became friends with that whole group of them was I used to deal with this dude, White Lightning. He was Jewish. He thought he was a gangster. <laughs> he ran reggae night at one of those clubs on Melrose. And he thought he was like a Jewish gangster. He had like a Jew star with diamonds. <laughs> and he had a black girl from, but she was sucking everybody's dick. He was just a rich white guy. He didn't fucking know. He used to have weed in the building. Ask Josh Wolf about this. He used to live in the building, but he, was, he sold big amounts of weed. But he was too scared to sell it. Like, he always got robbed. And he would hide it Jesus. in the garage. I wonder who did that. <laughs> he would hide it in the garage, and he would hide it. This it would be great if your story was, but I always robbed him. He yeah, was, oh, I always, oh, I always got this fucking guy. <laughs> and he used to hide it in this chick's apartment that had no chin. 
You ever see those women? That just, and it's not like she got operated. She just had no chin, but she had the biggest tits. And she sucked the best dick in North America when you gave her three lines of blow. So you go over there, let her suck your dick. And she was lonely. She'd say, you want to smoke weed? And then after she smoked weed with you, you'd say, this weed is great. She'd go, don't say nothing. But this is blah, blah, blah's <laughs> weed. And you go, hey, she'd go, I got three pounds in the back. No. Really? Can you wait here? I'm going to go take a shower. Okay. <laughs> I robbed that bitch boy while she was taking a shower. Get the fuck out of here! <laughs> what would happen like when your eyes like oh, like when someone when you saw someone you could take with like your eyes? Just go, <gasps> oh my god! This is like what did it feel like? Seven ninety eight, and we kept robbing that fuck. L A. When I moved here, and you hear the game out here, you're like, what? You can't. Your head can't get around when someone's like, I'm I'm a drug dealer, and they'd say it out loud to you, and you know them for five minutes. You're like you. You're not a fucking drug dealer. There's not a drug dealer on the planet that I know that would tell someone in the first five minutes of meeting them that they're a fucking dealer. It's just, you're just begging to get arrested or crewed up on. It's crazy. You know, I used to, my prey was drug dealers. From 81 to like 85. I mean, I went to prison for kidnapping. In New York, right? I went to prison in in, uh, Boulder. But my main prey was drug dealers. And it would, we'd be cool. And then once they tell me, I can't front you, if they did anything I didn't like, that was it. If Lee came to me and said, I went to Mick the other night, he wouldn't front me a fucking ounce of coke at 2 in the morning. That's it. We're going to rob him. And I would just work you. I would just work you, work you, work you. What are you doing? I'm going to the city. Boom. That means I got two hours in your apartment. Yeah, you're gone. All little beanie to the thing. Unless you're taking the fucking. That was my prey for years, and I gotta tell you something. Today, I still don't feel guilty about it. Like I feel guilty about the people I robbed, the (laughs) drug dealers. You know, I met people. Let me tell you what the best thing that happened to LA was. That by the time I got to LA, I didn't want to do nothing else. Like I was already a comedian. Like the comedy had won. The comedy had won. But there was a time in my life where. I'd be broke at 9 in the morning, and by 11, God would put somebody in my life to rob. And the guy would walk up to me. Like, I had people come. You know, these are guys that came up to me and go, man, I got $3,000. I'm looking to buy an ounce and a half of Coke. <laughs> what? <laughs> Where's the money? At my house. Okay, I got a guy. I would fucking work it. And if you push a little bit, you know what? The guy's going to be cautious. Like, I would push. Give me the money. I'll go get it. Oh, yeah. no, I got to go with you. Now you're fucked, Lee. But there were guys that would say, I'll give you the money. Oh, really? All right, I'll come back in an hour. Peel. <laughs> Peel. And what if you ever saw them again? You wouldn't see them. You wouldn't see them. Because right when the time I took the next 5,000, let's say the flight to fucking Albuquerque was at 455. I'd meet, make it three. So I went right from Mick's house to the airport with Mick's money. And I'd fly to like a small destination, and I'd chill for three weeks and live like a doctor, get my dick sucked, smoke weed, smoke coke. Really? Did you ever connect in the spot you were flying to? Yeah, and by the time I got back, my friends would cool it. And then he would show up, the guy, and i go, you're not going to believe what happened. We got fucking robbed. The cops were there. The feds showed up. They wanted your name. I want my money. They wanted your name. I didn't say anything. Fuck you. You're going to ask me for fucking money? You motherfucker. I hit you with this fucking... No, no. We were just kidding. All right. We lost the 5,000. It was fucking amazingly... And I Would had, you have the plane ticket already, or do you just go to the airport? I had the. I had not a dime in my pocket until I got his five grand. So you just go to the airport and be like, when's the soonest... Flight to a small. No, family. did you not know I already had it planned out? <laughs> if the flight was at four fifty five, what time I gotta be there? Three fifty five. I would meet him in, in Hollywood at fucking three and you would be driving. I'd be packed, the luggage would be in your car. When he gave me money, I was going straight to the fucking airport late. There was no stop, there was no I gotta get flop. Nothing. The airport. Yeah, and I work. Give, I give a guy like you four hundred. You say something, I'll kill you. <laughs> Okay, I'll break your fucking head. You don't know nothing. You don't know nothing. I'm going to give you 400 and I'm going to keep in touch with you. I'm going to call you every fucking day. I want you at that bar. And every time he comes in, I want you to fucking tell me what he says. And that's it. And this guy would be at the bar. And what happened? They fucking arrested me. They took me to some jail. I couldn't even tell him. Show me the paperwork. What fucking paper? I don't want to show you shit, motherfucker. <laughs> or fucking. you grease the guy that you know he's going to talk to and say, I don't know. The, the cops came in. Yeah, like I'd have you saying. They look for him. I'd have you saying. Joey got busted. Yeah. You tell him. 
So he called my mother's house. I didn't even talk to him. He called my mother's house, you know. I yeah. had we had it down pat. <laughs> you were gone. It was gone. How often would you do this? Every two weeks. <laughs> every ten days. Every time a pigeon came along. I took a guy in Boulder that wanted to join the mafia. I got him for like three thousand dollars. He came to me one day. Mick, who comes to you? You're sitting there scratching your head going, man, I could use a thousand bucks. And all of a sudden this kid comes up to me and says, I gotta tell you something. I always want to be in the mafia. Do you know anybody in Brooklyn? I'm like, I know a couple people. I don't know anybody in Brooklyn. All right? I don't know anybody. This was 1991. Last time I talked to somebody in Brooklyn was 83. This guy, you know anybody in Brooklyn? I don't want to be. What do you want to do? I want to join the mafia. Let me make, and I would work him. I wouldn't go right for the money. I'd say, let me call the guy I know. You got money. It's going to cost you. <laughs> like there's a membership fee. Yeah, there's a membership fee. I'm going to cost you. <laughs> and the guy would look at me and go, are you serious? Put your money away. I'm not even going to ask you what you got. I'd work the guy. That was the other thing. It's like wait. a long con. It was. Yeah, yeah, you have to do long cons. It's a, You're not going to meet a drug dealer. He's going to let you in. You're going to introduce me. You're going to. Yeah, a real guy is not going to say. Gonna let you I'm going to fucking. Okay. It's a square for sure. This is a month. Here. So I'm working people monthly. I got three guys working at once. How do you keep all the stories straight? I'm just waiting for the opening. <laughs> you tell all three of them the same story. Oh. So I got you. You keep coming and get me some good coke. We're at a bar one night and you go, Coco, here. I'm like, oh, fuck, that shit's good. Where'd you get that? Ah, some white guy I know up in Studio City. Okay. The next night you come back, look what he got. He's got rocks, he's got powder. Now I start working you. I buy a gram, two grams, an eight ball, an ounce. I take you out of your comfort zone. You've been buying grams. Even he's going to go, where you getting this money? My friend Coco, bro, he loves this shit. In fact, he wants to buy four ounces. That's how I get him. You be the middleman. Go to him and get the four ounces, but I want to meet him. Four ounce deal would go as planned. Sweet as shit. Mick loves Coco. Mick loves Coco. You're out of the picture. You're gone. I'll give you a taste. I'm not going to rob you, but I don't need you no more. I'm going to deal with directly with him. And I would work him for a month. If I told him, Mick, let me get four ounces of Coke, I'll be back at 9, I'd be there at 8.45 with his money and a milkshake from fucking Carvel. I let the guy rest. And then one night, without even thinking, talk, let me get four ounces. And while I was there, my pager would go off. I'd already tell you. would already see me. As soon as I get in there, make my pager go off. Bling. Oh, shit, can I use your phone? Yeah, yeah, and will you just be telling me about the weather? Yeah, and it's sunny. Okay, Mick, fuck, how are we going to do this? This I just got another call for a guy. He wants a half a pound. You got that on you? Yeah, but I'm going to make you cash. He's got more money than God. What does he want to pay? Uh, what do you want? Uh, I want 14. I told him 18. We're both going to split. Let's split the money. Now I got him. I'm in his greed now. All right, let me do this. Let me drop this four off, and I'll come back and pick up the eight. What's he going to say? It's Saturday night. He's getting his dicks up. No, 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 no. Don't come back. I'll give you the eight and the four. Go and come back later on. I'll meet you later at my mother's at two. He just, I just caught him at his weakest moment because I played him. I've been playing him for a month. I've been giving him his money. Now in front of him, my pager goes off. He knows I'm doubling up. He knows I'm selling a quarter pound of coke a day. Now I just got a call for three of them. You know what, Mick? Here's the money for the quarter pound. Let me. Here's money for two ounces. Let me get six on the cuff. I still got them for six. That's twelve thousand dollars plus the. That's 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 without even me making a profit. He's looking for twelve. I'm gonna make fucking twenty two. I'm gonna go make ten because I'm selling it for wholesale. You got. I don't give you a gotta fuck. flip it in about two hours. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I don't really give a fuck because it's not mine. How easy to sell coke. <laughs> If I call you and say I got two ounces of Coke at eighteen per, that's thirty six hundred. But tonight, tonight alone, from eight to ten, Uncle Joe is doing a sale for two grand flat. I'll move that in fifteen fucking minutes. Wow! Because it's it's fifty six grams. It's all profit for you. It's all profit for me. I don't give a fuck. It's like when I when you come to me with a store. I got a stolen credit card. I come to you and I go, yeah. What do you want? The iMac? Yeah. How much is it? Nineteen hundred. I'm going to come to your house at 8 o'clock. I want $1,000 for the iMac. You're not going to get that nowhere else. It's $1,800 plus tax, plus the two fifty from Apple, for the Staminkia fee. But $1,000, you're going to give me, and you'll get it. Right. You'll get it. That's a deal. You're not going to get that on Amazon. I'll wait for Black Friday. You're not going to get that money. 
I just gave you a deal below fucking way below cost. Could you sell it in like let's say you went to a place, a new town? Could you find people to sell it to, or it was only like your friends? I could sell it to my friends, but that's who I where I made the move. I dumped the coke on the way out of town. I dumped. I would let's say you're the buyer. You sold and, it before you got it. Right. I sold it before I got it. I'm never going to get stuck with it. You, I already have your cash. <laughs> yeah. You, I already told you I'm coming over with six ounces at 2,000 an ounce. <laughs> That's 12,000, but you're going to give me fucking 7,500 cash tonight. And I'm going to give you clean cocaine. No cut, no, no, no I'm not going to make your nose peel, nothing. <laughs> All right. We're you're talking gonna, fucking game You're going to cut that and you're going to sell that. I'm moving that right out of town. <clears throat> When I even when I was a regular drug dealer and I played Danny B, you know Danny B who calls you. I used to get drugs from him. I get a quarter. Let's say I get a quarter kilo from him. That's ten ounces, right? Let's say ten and a half ounces. I get ten and a half ounces for those days for sixty five hundred bucks. All right. My goal was to make a profit because I'm a coke fiend. So I would make sure before I got on that plane to pick it up, I already had ten thousand dollars worth of cash sold. So when I got off the plane, I already had thirty five hundred dollars worth of profit. I'm picking up six ounces, but I'm selling three right off the bat. I'm selling four right off the bat at 18 a grand or whatever. You know, you follow me? You, you, yeah. You see how this, if I'm a Coke dealer, I don't want to buy a kilo to put a kilo in my house. I don't right. want to do that. I'm buying a kilo. So yeah, you don't, wanna, to, you don't yeah. want to figure it out. I don't want to figure it out. <laughs> you don't want to have a kilo of cocaine and you got to figure it out. When I go to Mix House, <laughs> I'm going with five ounces of cut in the bag. He's going to give me the Coke. I'm going to open it. I'm going to throw my cut. I'm going to take an ounce of pure in. I'm going to throw four in. I'm going to shake it up real good and crunch it up and bring that to your house. I'm going to do the cut right on the way to your house. This is no laboratory. This ain't no naked girls with baggies. This is Uncle Joe. You rock and fucking roll. And a real guy never would have let you bring in another guy. Right. would say, no. Yeah, that's on you. That's if you want to move weight, you move it. I'll give it to you, and that's on you. I don't want to meet a new guy. But some people go, no, let me meet Yeah, him. the no, real greed, like people that, to meet you, man. that don't have a tight fucking game. Those are the, That's why I was surprised that guy's been in the same spot for 10 years. Because most guys, six months, nine months, or they're renting three different spots. So when you go see him, it's a stash spot anyway. It's not even where he lives. Well, this is where he lives, but I know he's got a stash spot. He's yeah. got a stash, stash spot around town. But he does all his business very... When he comes back from getting the product, he calls you. This is the way he worked with me. He was very smart. He called me, and he would say, this is what I got. He knew what, what I had. Sometimes he'd give me a big chunk, sometimes, but he would leave right down again. He's been selling for 20 years Smart. in this area, so he's got his customers. He takes no outsiders. Yeah, that's the key. Takes no outsiders. I know a guy in Jersey I grew up with. I'm 51. He's 51. Bought a house. He has a Chevy. He works part-time. I know he's got a half a mil put away for sure on a speaker. I know for a fact. He's been selling blow since high school, this guy. He lives, you know, modestly. He doesn't go out to dinners. If he moves two ounces a week, Lee, makes four or five thousand dollars. It's twenty thousand a month and nobody knows what you're doing. That's two forty a year. Nobody knows what you're doing. Cash. Because the people you're dealing with are very these people are fiends. When I was snorting Coke I was a fiend. Let's pretend if I was doing this type of cocaine when I was on a TV show, right? <laughs> keep two years. Dead. I got one guy I'm dealing with in two years. You're going to make a fortune off me. You're, You're going to take it all. That guy's taking everything. Yeah, he's taking everything. It's it's The, the drug dealing world is amazing, but there there's was stupid a cat. drug dealers and there's smart drug dealers. You don't even want nothing in your house, especially a guy like me. If I got an ounce of coke, before I got to my house, there'd only be two grams left. So the worst I can get in trouble is with those two grams. Does it even upset drug dealers when they get arrested? Or is it just part no, of it? No, no, they're very happy. <laughs> well, they're not being happy. but Yeah, they're, they're fucking upset. They just put but I, I didn't know. I didn't know if it was just like part of doing business. Like, well, it's, it's, it depends what type of drug dealer you are. If you're making 20, move, 20 key moves a week or a month and you're fucking, you know, making a half a mil a fucking month, eventually somebody's going to fucking crack you know, you know that as a smart businessman. You're going in and going, wow, I've already done this for a year. I've got uh, 200000 under my mattress. Yeah. You know, do you I stop? You should have a get-out point. Do I stop or do I keep going? You know. That's what you were talking about, the greedy guys. I had a, There was a guy, the first comic in Chicago, not the first, but at least in my generation, that hit, that got a... Uh, he got a talent holding deal out of the Chicago Comedy Festival in 2000. And we didn't even know there was such a thing. 
We didn't even know what that meant. They gave him $250,000. I think I was 26, and he might have been 24. Like, that was like stockbroker money. Like, no one made that money in, in our the circles we were traveling. That was bizarre money. Five months later, he moved the dealer into his house. That's how, that's how uh, sly that dealer was. He got next to him right away. He found out about the money. He started fronting him. He got him charged up. He started feeding the ego, getting the guy high on himself. And then he said, listen, man, why do I got to go home? Why don't I fucking come in here and the party never ends? I was like, you make sense. <laughs> how fast did that 250 go? Gone. It was gone in here. Where is he now? Florida, I think that kid moved to Florida. Comedy still? Yeah, I think so. But he 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 owned it a couple years later. I mean, he was just too much, too fast. He moved the guy, and he jokes about it now. Uh, but yeah, man, he got him. Just the dealer was like a fucking alligator, just waiting for him to put his foot in the pond. Crazy. Even with all the drug dealers I rob, if you take that number and put it in hundreds of thousands of dollars, and the amount of drug dealer I gave money to, I'd still be losing. I'd still give money. I, I snorted a lot of coke, guys. I paid for a lot of coke, but I robbed a lot of coke. I got out, man, before. It was the one, like, towards the end when I was drinking, I had to have coke. But I never got, it, I was a true blue fucking drunk. You know, I've been sober. You, we were just talking about this 12 and a half years. But towards the end, that's what really scared me was when I was drinking and I get that fired up like I had to have. I'm like, where's the fucking man? Where's he at? Page him again. If I can get him over here. Where's, let's go over there. You know, it's fucking 6.30 in the morning. The guy's got kids kicking his fucking door. Wake him up. The kids, you know, he's probably up. <laughs> you know, just you all logic fucking goes. You know, all my madness was motivated by Bombay Sapphire gin and tequila. But once the cocaine got in there, I'm like, we got to push this car off of fucking Mulholland. I rented a car. I'm like, take me up to Mulholland. Brian Trainum, who owns a bar downtown, he's like, all right, let's go. We're up on Mulholland. We're out, we're pushing the car. He's like, what are we doing? It's four in the morning. I go, we're going to launch this fucking thing off the cliff, A-team style, and see if this fucking car blows up. Here in LA? Oh, yeah. We were up on Mulholland. Over, you know how they have those oversight things you could look at. Just for see. fun? Yeah. It was like four in the morning, and I had just moved here. I was, I was, I drank in LA for six months, and then I got sober, hopefully for good. So I'm like, I had a rented car, and it was fully insured. I'm like, let's launch this fucking thing off a cliff and see what happens. He goes, what? And he dives in the car from the passenger seat. We're pushing it like it was dead, you know? I had it in neutral. He dives in and pushes the emergency brake. He goes, I'm not walking all the way back down the fucking hill. He didn't give a shit that we were going to launch the fucking car into someone's house. He just didn't want to fucking walk back down home. Yeah, man, it was cr- It was. T- I knew if I drank out here... I saw a couple things. One, I'd be dead in a year for sure. But two, I saw that it was wide fucking open on the street. Like no one was really pulling any strings. And I'm like, if comedy doesn't work, I was on the opposite side you were. I'm like, I'll just fucking jump back in the game and just put a crew together out here because no one's doing anything. You know, I see guys in like ascots going, I'm a coke dealer. (laughs) I'm like, holy shit, this is the guy you're, you're copping from? I'm like, who's got your back? He's like, what do you mean? And I'm thinking, this guy's just walking around with weight, with loafers and a scarf and a fucking... (laughs) I'm like, you're just floating around with this? Like, no one... That's what you do? There's no one... You're not part of a crew? You don't have anyone backing you? (laughs) Like, you just went out, you know, you booked a commercial and you took 10 grand and you bought a kilo? (laughs) Didn't they shoot a movie about kids that were robbing people in the Hollywood Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that, like, the bling ring or something like that? It's... Yeah, it's you know you meet these people, these people let their guards down. They're not from that environment. Yeah, they don't. They're not from that society. So when they come up with an animal, and trust me, every day somebody gets hit by an animal here in L.A. This story, if you turn on the, I almost got caught and all that shit. You'll <laughs> see that half of those stories are L.A. That dumped in. It was an actor, and he turned this, and he be also they gave him a job as a lawnmower guy in front of somebody's house, and he fucking robbed the car. It's always something you know uh, because it, it's crazy if you I don't. take I make copies of everyone's driver's license that comes to my house that does handiwork everyone I go I understand you guys want a fucking living I got a copy machine right here give me your license and I'm gonna make it through you think I'm gonna fucking stay I don't give a fuck what you think 
Give me a copy of your fucking license or you're not doing the fucking work because you can come in and you get 10% for tipping off a score to your pal or your uncle that just got out and he's short on money and you came in and you saw three big screens and four MacBooks in my house. And you're getting 10% That's why of that. I don't like people cleaning my house. Yeah, so I'm like. Never let nobody clean your house. So I'm like, hey, give never, me. Never. We're making. Never. No outsiders in your house. Nothing. We're making copies, nothing. guys. Nothing. It's the weirdest thing. <laughs> I don't like no outsiders in my house. Like a lot of people get cleaning services to come in. I don't want nobody in my fucking house. When I go to a hotel, I, I don't want a misunderstanding. Let's just not have any misunderstandings. Yeah. Like nobody in my fucking room. Don't refill the snack bar. Don't do nothing. <laughs> Don't do nothing. Mind your fucking business. I'm leaving on Sunday morning. You can do whatever the fuck you want. I don't want nobody in my house. That's why when you were telling me, yeah, people, you're Jewish. That's even worse. I don't have anything in my house. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. You could be sitting there one night. Somebody might think you have something. You got three guys that might think you have something. And here you are and you, tied up, getting bit slapped, and they're asking you And you, you didn't do a fucking clothes. thing. You didn't you do a didn't thing. You didn't do a fucking thing. You don't ever want anybody in your fucking house. You clean your own fucking toilet. You do everything. Nobody comes in my house that doesn't necessarily have to be in there. We have water in the ceiling. And the guy was coming at 315. I was right there with him. I checked the yeah. fucking everything. I Can't let him know. Careful. He said, I'll be back Thursday. Can't be back Thursday. We're not going to be here. I own it. And I tell him, look, I used to be a fucking animal, guy. Yeah. So I, I know, see no the move you- coming. <laughs> um, by the way, not to interrupt you, it has been stroke week online. I'm going to tell you people for the last fucking time, all right? Just in case you got any ideas. Here it is. I don't want to do nobody's podcast. I don't have the fucking time. If you don't live in L.A., I can't do your podcast. I don't Skype. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing next. I don't know. I don't know. And now I got to get a hold of you and tell you I can't do your stupid fucking podcast. Let's just stop now. Don't hit me up for podcast. I don't want you to hook me up. I don't want to do dick. When I go to a fucking town to do comedy, I don't want to be fucking bothered. Number two, if you want me to sponsor you, it's all about cash, okay? Don't tell me what I could make. That fucking jerk off the other day. You could make 30000 selling websites. Really? Go sell fucking websites then. Show me one guy that's yeah, yeah, making yeah. 30000 He thinks like I'm some fucking Momo, right? Well, you could make that. Well, all right. Well, if I can make 30000 let's do this. It's commission, right? Yeah, you made 30000 Yeah, all the time. Send me fifteen, And you could sponsor the show. I don't want thirty. You made thirty, right? Yeah. Good. We want eight of that. It's fair. Okay. If you don't have eight of that 30, you ain't real. Bye. Today I got a guy. I made Oprah millions. <laughs> I'm the guy that made Oprah. I want to put a tour together. Oh. But he wants to get another. And the guy was serious. I should have taken this fucking email and read this fucking thing. He That's wants to a put a comedy tour. He put down what Russell Peters made last year, what Jerry Seinfeld made, what all the top comics made. And he said that if we do a tour, we can make more money than these guys, and we're funnier than them. But he wants to do a tour with all these attractions. Like, we're going to pull somebody who got arrested in that area into the stage and yell at him <laughs> and embarrass him and tape it. What? Like, right away, you're like, are you fucking retarded? He went from Oprah to grabbing yeah. felons out of the from audience. Out of the audience. <laughs> somebody, somebody <laughs> tweeted at me this week. And I'm sure he's nice, but he said when you when Joey comes to Indy, you should you guys should do a podcast from the prison for the inmates. Mind your fucking business. <laughs> like just, like, a, I like, don't a, even like t- a Johnny you Cash. Know, listen, let me tell you something. These people with all their fucking ideas. These people think that you just call up a prison. Yeah. And go, you don't need right, clearance. My name is Joey Diaz <laughs> and then my friend Lee Syatt. And we want to come in and do a podcast. Oh, the Invix would love that. When do you want to do it? Yeah. Let me book you in. Because our goal here is, is to, to make the inmates happy. <laughs> are you fucking stupid? And that's you got to ask those people. Are you fucking? Just ask me. I don't know. I'm sure he's a nice guy. He ain't a nice guy. He's a dummy. Because who would think? Who wants to go to a fucking... What makes you think I want to go inside a fucking prison and do a podcast with a bunch of people who are looking at my neck? <laughs> that's what they're looking at. They're looking at your fucking neck going, look at that guy. He eats good. <laughs> I can smell the salt. I can smell the fucking sausage from his fucking ears. Please, people, just leave me the fuck alone. I got a wife. I got a kid. I'm trying to get healthy. I'm trying to write a book. I'm trying to write jokes. I got a podcast. I got to communicate with friends and, and, and loved ones around here. I don't have time to call you during the week, guy. I don't. I don't even know what my next fucking move is. Today I had a guy hit me up on Facebook. Go to my Facebook page. Hi. You did a podcast with a gentleman. I think it was Bert Kreischer. 
and you said something about the government. What's the name of that agency? Are you retarded? <laughs> I don't know what I said on the podcast yesterday. What the fuck are you talking about? What I said, that you don't even know who the fucking guest is. You don't even know who the guest was. At least you can go to uh, Twitter or something. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah, it's not. It's <laughs> Did you respond? Yeah. You went back, you went back and forth with him. <laughs> what I say, though? Okay, do you want me to read the, the thing he wrote? Whatever, Lee. Read something, you <laughs> fuck. Jesus Christ. You want me to read the thing? No. You, you're, you're we had it. a lot of momentum going there, Lee, the until you threw a fucking address. stick right in the spokes. His response was, my brother, I don't remember what I said yesterday. Never mind. Two months ago, dot, dot, dot. That's all he responded with. And what did he say? Thanks for the honesty. <laughs> what the fuck you want me to tell him? What <laughs> <laughs> the fuck is wrong with this people? <laughs> oh. Thanks for the honesty. <laughs> you fucking Joe. Hey Joe, you do my podcast? <laughs> yeah, not you. Your family. I can drive to your house. I know. I'm saying these guys. Did you ever do that though? You're talking to a guy and you fuck. You're just vulnerable for a moment in front of him. And you're like, man, these motherfuckers. And you stop. And then they ask you for the exact same thing that you just went on a fucking rant for oh, ten please, minutes. All the time. And you're like, were you not listening? All the fucking time. To what I fucking just said for the last ten minutes. All the time. I don't have the time. If I had the time, I'd do them. I did, I did Doug Benson's at 4 in the afternoon. I had to cancel two fucking things. I don't have the fucking time, guys. I barely have the time for this. What do you think we're doing on a Tuesday night at 8 fucking o'clock? Because shit develops. And, you know, I yeah. got four fucking days in town. I got three days in town the next two weeks. So my Where time... Where are you going this weekend? Where are you playing? Buffalo, New York. No shit. You fucking beef on wick. A couple diet fucking wings. Diet wings? They got diet wings in Buffalo. That's what club are you playing? Helium. The only oh, club nice, they only man. They one fucking club up there. I mean, they don't have shit. They had the little chubby lesbian chick, but she moved to open up a roller skating rink or some shit. <laughs> Who the fuck knows? She bounced a few check for over for her. <laughs> Gotta go. Yeah, once you bounce a check in the comedy business, it's tough taking a call. You know what I'm saying? It's tough for somebody to It's going to get around, yeah. Call. Nah, I mean, uh, what are we talking about? Where you going to go this week? You're in Buffalo. No, before that, we're talking about something. Oh, some guy. Drug dealers. <laughs> And then people asking you to do podcasts. Yeah, podcasts, you know, businesses. People want to start businesses. Hi, how you doing? You want to start a business? Yeah, yeah. I just met you on Gmail. Yeah. I'm dying to fucking start a business with you. All right, get the fuck out of here. Fucking, what the fuck is wrong with you? Everybody wants to start. Oh, you should come to Denver and start a weed business. All right, I'll do it tomorrow. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I got nothing better to do but to fly back and fucking forth. I can't stop looking at my child. Yeah, that's you know what I mean? Who the fuck wants to stop looking at your kid? One day you're gonna get uh, you're gonna get the wife pregnant. You're gonna, you're gonna look at your kid. You can't take your eyes off him. Nothing means the same. Nothing. You don't. I don't give a fuck. What I want to hear. What story do you want to tell me? I gotta sit there and listen to you do a fucking podcast with you in a basement with your mother up there cooking goulash or something. And a shit. waste of your time is no longer a waste of your time. Yeah, it's, it's a waste of the waste kids' of my time. time. Yeah, yeah. I don't have the fucking time. You know, some guys last week. Can you call into the show on Sunday? Listen, guy. On Sunday, I do this thing at 10 o'clock. I get out of there at 11, 11.30. I got to drive back. Whatever time my wife gets out of church with the kid, we got to go eat. Yeah. So if your podcast has to interfere with eating, you're not going to get the call. Can I be that honest with you? Well, if you could, did you just not fucking hear what I told you guy? <laughs> that if I'm with them, I can't pick up the fucking phone and call you. Yeah. I can't. It's impossible. I'm, I'm with my daughter and the fucking wife at the restaurant. And you want to ask me who's going to win Anderson Silva against Diaz. I don't give a fuck. I really don't even give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. It's going to be silver, by the way. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't give a fuck. <laughs> you know, people want you to give a fuck about things. And that's the problem. As you as you get older, you don't give a fuck. You, like, well, how did I waste all that yeah. time doing that? Watching that stupidity and doing this and doing that. And you start narrowing it down. I just got a flip phone during the day, I think I told you. So I forward my iPhone calls to the flip phone. From ten Put to the six. Put the thing away, please. Put the thing away. What, You're this? making me nervous. Yeah, yeah. That means the feds are watching you. Ten Put to the six. Thing Hold away. on, just look right in this little hole right here. <laughs> Put the thing away. You make me nervous <laughs> at the fucking phone. It's the size of a fucking house. Well, I know people have asked you to do Biggest Loser, and do you see what happened recently with Nobody them? Nobody asked me to do the Biggest Loser. Hasn't people? No, not not them, but like people keep saying you should go on it. Yeah, but they do a police background check. Really? Yeah, they don't want none of that shit. Oh, okay. Nobody's then. ever said it to me because they know I won't do that shit. They I don't do that stuff, Lee. What makes you think I want to be on TV? I know you don't. With a bunch of fucking homos. <laughs> Look at me. I need a protein. That Jillian Michaels, the queen of the Jews, whipping me and shit, telling me to lose weight. Go fuck yourself before I fucking <laughs> call the man of steel. 
the fuck is wrong with these people? Fucking obvious loser, whatever the fuck, biggest loser. I'm gonna be there. Obvious loser. Of, <laughs> obvious of, yeah, loser. Whatever the fuck it is with a bunch of Gentiles. <laughs> this is fun. Get the fuck out of here. I was just telling you guys before the show, when I did that Ari show the other night, the. Uh, this, this is not happening. The, 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 this fest. is not happening. You know, I'm a professional, and I try to be a professional, but I also have another problem. I'm not a fucking fake. And I went to this thing the other day on Saturday night, and I was in a great mood when I went down. I had a story in my head. I was going to do a story about revenge when me and Tommy Russo and Didi Quintero beat up this fucking jerk off with a wiffle ball bat by Nick's Pizza. <laughs> and I get there, and right away I started seeing industry people. But, like, industry people that I've known throughout the years, and they, if, I, if, I, if, if, if a train fell out of the sky, they, they'd want the train to hit me. Like, they've tried really hard not to even uh, avoid me, but to fuck with me at every obvious point. A couple of these cunts I saw down there, you know? Two cunts in particular and a couple guys, you know, that work for Comedy Central, they do whatever they do, they have that little fucking job, which they have no talent at all. They don't do nothing. They don't even know what talent is. They know what people tell them. You know what I'm saying? When they're sitting in a group, and, eh, oh my God, I've seen Hannibal Buress, oh, he's so funny. you know, they just agree with what everybody else agrees with. That's it. And they go to each other. When you go to that, uh, it's not whatever the fuck. When we go to that, this is not happening. And the little Comedy Central comics go up with their dumb fucking stories. And you see the Comedy Central people. <laughs> There's their boys. When we go up, they sit there stone-faced, like looking at them. You can see these motherfuckers have hatred for the real people. They're not real. And this is what I forget. That these people are part of a fake fuck. They have no, they were raised fake. Their parents were fake. You know what I'm saying? They've been fake all their lives. They've been seeing people go, you know, your pa people come over and they're like, oh my God, it was so nice to have you over. Then when they close the door, like, well, lucky they left. They saw that as children. So they bring that, they start doing that also. They start telling people, oh my God, it no, listen, you're a fucking asshole. Let me bring hummus to my fucking house again. When your child sees that, he gets it. When your child sees that, you don't have to be nice to people. That they rather hear the truth. Sometimes people rather hear the truth. I rather when my wife makes me a dinner, if it's spectacular, I'll suck a fucking pussy ten times. But if the food isn't that good, I'll tell her the truth. I'll say, honey, I didn't like that meal. I didn't like how you cook it. So she doesn't keep doing it so I don't get myself into a personal rut as a human being. And I have to lie to her. And now every six weeks she's like, I made your favorites. They're not my fucking favorites. I don't like that shit, you know? And I'm like that with everybody. But that's how I was raised. I saw my mother be real with people. Yeah. I saw my mother at a bar tell people instead of what they wanted to hear. She didn't care about the customer. She didn't care about, hey, listen, I don't like you. I don't want you in my bar. I just don't like you, man. And you don't like me, and you've talked about me, so why would you want to drink here? Yeah. Get the fuck out of my bar. I saw my mom do that. And I put two and two together, what a real person is like, what my mother wanted me to be like. So when I get around those people, I get angry. I, it just makes my fucking head. And now that well, I've been in L.A. all these <clears throat> years, yeah. I react to them different. And the other night, I let them take me down with their evil and with their kiss of death prowess. Yeah. I let them take me down. And that's why I bombed at that show. And, guys, I got the fuck right off the stage. I didn't even say goodnight to anybody. Like, I didn't want to say goodbye to anybody. I just hate those people now. Like, I have no use for fakeness, for telling somebody, hey, that was great. No, it wasn't. Why are you lying to them? Why are you lying to me? When I get off stage, I know if I bombed. You're going to come up to me and tell me that was great. I even get pissed at people when they come up to me and go, that was a great set. No, it wasn't, guy. That set sucked. Okay? I, I saved it somewhere along the line, but I did the same jokes or whatever. I, I'm just one of those people. So It changes the uh, tone of the audience for sure. You know what I mean? If that's part of it. Because an audience isn't going to judge it that hard no matter what. You know what I mean? It's like stockbrokers... You know, sitting in a in unless a, it's a really bad. Convention. You know what do you mean? Unless it's like a bombing, bombing. We've sat, you've sat in a thousand bad shows, Lee. That some have included me, and some have included some of your favorite fucking comics. Yeah. You've paid sixty and seventy dollars to go to those festivals, and you've come back and told me the truth that this person sucked, this person sucked. This yeah, that Oddball sucked. Festival that takes a lot of cra great. character yeah. because nobody's going to pay sixty dollars and come back and tell you it sucks. That's why there's so many exquisite restaurants. They suck. Half these restaurants you go to, they suck. You go in there, you're like, I don't know what the fuck they're thinking, but this sucks. But nobody's ever going to tell you something sucks and they put a $100 yeah. investment. The woman is definitely not going to tell you. Everything to them is fucking great. 
you know, they eat dirt wrapped up in a fucking tamale. Oh, this is great. This is great. No, it wasn't. Shut the fuck up before I smack you. <laughs> it sucks. Shut Were up. Were you filming or no? What's that? Were you filming for the, the show or no? What show? The one you just said you he, did. He did. You did already show, but this was at the uh, right, festival. Right, right. This is at the festival. Oh, this is the festival. Yeah, so I it wasn't the show. No, no, I taped You already taped it. I seen it on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. I taped the yeah, show. Yeah. Uh, we taped two of them, and then now we're doing a TV one. So, yeah, so you, that was just a lot. That was a throwaway, though, that right? That was a so throwaway. Fucking, yeah, oh, yeah, I didn't yeah. give a fuck. No, yeah. no, no. I, I, Not a throwaway, just, but you don't have to fucking go up and hit a fucking home run because the no, cameras are on. No, no, yeah. no. I don't give a fuck. I just did it because... I wanted to help Ari. He's my friend. But once I went down, I saw the people that were saying hello to him and creepy people. Like some girl came up to him. We were having a conversation. Some girl came up to him. Didn't give a fuck. Hi. Do you know how I am? Guess. And Ari's playing like, listen, did you not see I'm having a fucking conversation here? Ari's like, uh, I don't know. I'm Susan whatever's uh, assistant. Really? You're an assistant. You're coming to say hello. Get the fuck out of my face with some white dude with a blue shirt on with ugly shoes on and he was just standing there like she was deadbeat, and he was a bigger fucking deadbeat. You know, and they're spreading their deadbeatness around. Get the fuck in the seat with that popcorn on a fucking Saturday night eating popcorn. Get the fuck out of here. There's booze. There's heroin. You're around the block from downtown. You're fucking eating popcorn. But why didn't why didn't you just do the story that you? Because you've you've said, we've talked before about how like if there's older people in the audience, you used to get nervous and you don't anymore. So why did you let them change your story? I you know what's weird? I didn't it's want a general satisfaction. Yeah, I think it's a weird thing. It's a generate when we came up, there was a weird thing where some uh, somehow your pow, the power shift just came and it just fucked with you from like being a young comic. I don't know if you share, but it sounds like the same thing. And then you got to get on the other side where you just go, "And I, I don't give a fuck. I'm going to do what I'm going to do." Anyway, you know what I mean? Cuz I did a showcase one time and it was like you're already starting at a disadvantage. And you could, you know, when you go up and you're performing for an audience, you could, you could feel where the audience is at, and you're like, don't you want this to go your way? I mean, if we collaborate on this, we get the best result. Like you trying to break me isn't good for either one of us on a business level. You feel me? But that's not the approach. It's always like, you fucking jump through hoops and you prove it to me. I'm already here, man. I'll never forget. I walked off stage to a standing ovation at the Improv in 2004 and the executive from a network was in the back and I'm on cloud nine and I'm high-fiving people it's just a magical set and I go what do you think of that I just happened to see him he was standing by those double doors that opened by the sound booth and he goes I go look look and I'm waving people have turned to watch me walk out of the room and I'm waving to him and I go what do you think of that he goes I don't know what to do with that and I go what are you talking about he goes I don't know how to I don't know I go look that's your audience that's who watches your network. What do you mean you don't know? I don't know how to... Because Downey wouldn't buy advertising. <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean you don't... That's the people that buy th- things. What are you talking about? And then we went outside. He's like, I just don't know how to translate that into a television show. And I go, well, that's where we go and we meet with writers and showrunners and we pair it up and I tell you more stories. and we. Pa- I mean, the business is now... Wasn't this just to let you know what I'm capable of on a comedy level? And you just saw it? Every, it wasn't a person that stayed in the seat. And Too I much did, work. Yeah. It was like, it was, uh, it was, a, it was a, a bizarre, confusing puzzle. And it was weird that I think it's shifting now because of social media. Like, did the Radford Hall sh- uh, show Saturday night. Sold out, standing room only sold out there, the show. I don't need somebody to tell me that I'm funny anymore. I don't, I don't need that. Come to my show. You know, you were, thank you again for making me a part of your show. You know, invite me to come out and do stand-up. I perform for your audience. So my job that night wasn't like, hey, everybody fucking l- look at how funny I am. It was, I'm going to be funny for you, for your headliner coming on. I'm going to do my little dance. I'm going to give you my goods for 15 minutes. Perform to the top of my capabilities. But Uncle Joey's closing it out, and it's his show, and it's his night. Old school style. You know what I mean? You don't want to come on and scoop everything up. That was great, man. By the way, that was a your your audience is the shit. Well, these guys, these podcast people, listen. Now you're getting people that come into the shows and they know what you're about. Ten exactly. years ago, you were going up on stage cold. Cold. You said two words that were wrong. You turned it off half the audience. Yeah. Now you're fighting fucking upstream. We don't have that problem no more. People are coming out, and I appreciate them. I could give them a better show. They yeah. know where we're coming exactly. from. Exactly. There's nobody getting upset. We did a fucking live podcast at the Laugh Factory, the second one. It was horrifically. 
because half the people there didn't belong wow. because the Laugh Factory marketed it wrong. They thought it was a stand-up show. I told the Laugh Factory 15 fucking times. <laughs> yeah. The Laugh Factory, I never dealt with nothing like that. Me and Lee have had this conversation on podcast for three weeks. How half these club managers don't know what a fucking podcast is. <laughs> they don't know it's how to ridiculous. package it, so do me a favor. Just leave it alone. Yeah. Don't touch it. Just make believe we're coming in on a Wednesday night. We're going to do what yeah. we're going to do. Or don't, don't book it and then try to make it your thing. It's your thing. It's it, it, This is your guy's show. You bring it in. Don't don't be like, make it like this. Go fuck yourself. They call me. Oh, well, who's coming to the show? Who's doing stand-up? How many minutes are people doing a piece? <laughs> it's a podcast. So does that mean six people go up or seven? I was <sighs> like, I don't believe this. <laughs> I do not fucking believe this shit. That's like the last thing that's holding people back is it's still it's too expensive to book theaters, so you still have to deal with some of these people. But once someone figures out a way to have it's music a, venues, Lee, they're doing music venues now. Yeah, you go in on a night like on a Monday when it's dark, you do a hundred seats at twenty bucks a pop, and you keep the door. The, the so could you venue. tour like that? Could you tour like like headlining comedians tour and still make close to the same money? Yeah, well, I'll well, tell you're, you you're, what, when you're doing those rock clubs, you earn every dollar. It's fucking shoot them up, Sally. And if they know you're coming, though. I'm saying you do those clubs still, with your audience. because they're standing. It's a lot of shit. There's no door people. It's not the improv. So you earn your money, but you lose. It's, it's fucking crazy. You know, Stanhope did it for a while, and it worked for him. Yeah. But his audience, that's what they are, you know? Yeah. Most people, Rogan people, you know, they don't want to go to that shit. That's why he stopped doing the House of Blues. You know, he wouldn't let them stand up. And they said, no, I don't want people standing up in my yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, gotta you want to stand up for 30 yeah. minutes, bro? After 20 minutes, I just paid fucking oh, 20 forget bucks. It. I'm standing up. You got to rent chairs. You just take it out of the door. You rent 300 chairs, 200 chairs, whatever, and you put chairs in there. You got to put chairs. You know, you got to sit down. People have to relax. I don't want people sitting up yelling, woo. No waitresses. They got to walk back and forth. That adds a different touch to it. That adds a complete different feel when there's no waitress and you're losing them. Are there only are there only corporate comedy clubs or are there like individual comedy clubs? There's individual ones. But do like main like A level headliners go there? If you're the if only me game and in you town. opened up a club in fucking Detroit, uh huh, and we paid the comics and we hooked up with Gersh and CAA and we paid their fees. We can get whatever comic we want. Okay. But when you see their fees, you're going to have a heart attack. Really? You know, because to really make it, you got to have the big guys come in that sell tickets. Those guys want money. They also want a white limo. They also want eight hotel rooms for their friends and family. Oh. Uh. Plus, you have all this advertising you're doing, which advertising is out the fucking roof right now. That's why when I get an email from somebody telling me about how easy it is to put a tour together, I giggle my ass off. Didn't... Funny or die have a tour with all the Gentiles of comedy. <laughs> right? With Whitney Cummings and, you know, what's his name? Uh, the guy, you know, Step Brothers. And everybody was on the tour. What happened? And Nick Swanson. What happened? What happened to the tour? The Oddball tour? No. The other one they did. They I did don't know. Funny or die did a tour two, three years ago. Oh, uh, okay. And, you know, touring is hard because you got five fucking egos and their agents are a part of it. So your tickets are going to be $85 fucking dollars, $100 for That's five egos. Money, man. You ever go see five egos on stage? It's the dumbest thing you'll ever see in your life, people. Don't go see five fucking Five's egos. Five's too much anyway for one show. For one show. Unless the show's running two and a half hours, which means it's a half an hour too long, which means five people chopping up 20 minutes. Everyone's and everyone's going to go over the light. Yeah, and everyone's going to want to go in the third spot. Everybody. <laughs> That's why I don't want to be part of boy bands. That's why you don't want to be part of those tours, you know, T-shirts. I, I, I'd rather not. I like doing it small. Keep. I like, I'm like. i a microeconomic type of motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm not a macro type of motherfucker for comedy. I'd rather keep it small, keep the prices low. I want yeah. the people to go home and felt like they got a bargain. If I charge him 30, they're going to go, that wasn't a bargain. He sucked. But if I charge him 20, 18, yeah. that's a fucking bargain, guy. And I want that. I don't need to make fucking money off doing that shit. I don't really. It drives me crazy. Once the business angle of it comes on, and these agents will call you. I got a call last week. We're going to do $35 tickets. We'll cancel me. Yeah. Well, how about 30? Cancel me. How much are tickets? 22 is the top ticket I charged. And that's probably with it's Friday probably 20 with a service fee. So you, that's probably what's bringing 22. You 22. Yeah. 22. That's it. 
I don't give a fuck. Don't don't book me then. I don't believe in that. I don't believe a, a comedy club should, a person should pay. Oh, I don't believe it. Because they got to get a babysitter. They got to get valet. I don't believe they it. Gotta, I just don't thing. want it. I don't want that. I don't want that. You know, I don't need twenty five dollars or thirty for these shirts. Twenty dollars. That's it. I don't need all this. You know, to 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 destroy people. I never had that desire. I didn't want people to come. Oh, a shirt. This that that. No. I don't even give a fuck if you buy a shirt. Just come to the fucking show. Let's laugh. Yeah. Let's smoke dope afterward and go the fuck home. We'll take a picture. That's all I want out of these people. You know what I'm saying? Lee, what's the matter with you? No, I'm fucked up. How are you <laughs> fucked up? Because you put hash in there. No, I didn't put no hash. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. You've no been hash. putting hash in for like two weeks. No. You have man. like little exciting periods. What happened to you last night? You got stoned. Oh, my God. I got stoned. <laughs> I went to the. I, I forced myself to go to the gym at 9 o'clock. I got a little bit unhigh. Or a little bit sober. Did you sweat some of that THC out at the gym? Yeah. Did you smell it coming out of your fucking... No. <laughs> but I, I had to turn off Scarface because I thought the, he was going to smack his wife. And it, it gave me... I started panic, having a panic attack on the elliptical. So I you were telling me that, Clay. You don't like to see women get smacked. It freaks me out. But you'll watch porn and see them get fucked in the ass and come down their titties. And sh- <laughs> yeah. I don't know. There's some... <laughs> you see what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. There's something yeah. about like seeing a girl get smacked in the face freaks me out. Let me give some shout outs here, right? <laughs> Miles Babs, I love you, cocksucker. Fred Nazar, stop asking. You're, you're fucking disgusting. Peter Ho Quinn, Amy, who loves you? 420 Malibu Zelda, you bad motherfucker. Raised by Wolves and Lauren Rosenker. I love you guys. Always. Yeah, Peter, Fred Nazar, stop. You're embarrassing. You know what I'm saying? One time. I did it because you're a fucking pain in the ass. You know what I'm saying? What's up, Lee? What do you got planned for tonight? Where are you going to go? Tonight I got nothing. We're gonna go and get some cheeseburgers. How Ooh. much? How many calories you got left tonight? Like, you're not gonna eat tonight. Like this a thousand. Don't, this don't do nothing to you. Oh yes, it does. Like you have a thousand, thousand calories. Well, left? I only have. <laughs> how do you have a thousand <laughs> fucking calories? At night, at night. I'll tell you why. Because I had to take a sleeping pill at six in the morning, so I didn't wake up till noon. So I had I had one Subway sandwich today, and then I had two other podcasts. That's how he's a thousand. He woke up an hour ago. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so yeah, so I still have something left because every time I. Get this high, I have to eat. Why'd you eat a Subway sandwich? You didn't go to Big Mike's? After everything we went through, you didn't go to Jersey Mike's. You're back at that dump. I had two. I, I had three podcasts today. I, I had to I, go to the I, gym. I, I, there's a Jersey Mike's around the corner. What happened? It was you easier. You're not on me again? It, what's easier? You got North to Hollywood diner, To put shitty diner food too. in your... No, don't go there. No. Oh, to put shitty used to, food... We used to go there when no, we first no, no. started working. Why would you go to Subway? You got, That's it. It's over. No more Subway. You're a Jersey Mike's guy now. Okay. That's it. It was pretty good. That's it. No more Subway. That's the new rule in the house. No more Subway. I don't even want to hear that shit. You're a Jersey Mike guy. Get a regular sandwich, no chips, and get a diet soda, and it'll be fine. I do it all the fucking time. Tuna with a little onion, hold the vinegar and all, with a little mayo, you're fine. They got the turkey, nice turkey, real turkey with provolone cheese. You put some lettuce, you put some mayonnaise, salt and pepper, it's a beautiful fucking sandwich. No more Subway guy. That's it. You're a man. You're a church fucking evaluator. You're the fucking guest host of the church. How are you eating that disgusting shit? People are looking at you no for more leadership. Church, no more of that shit. You got Jersey Mike's right around the corner, bro. Right around the corner. Why do you hate America? He hates it. He loves that pepperoni. <laughs> he goes in there and he gets that pepperoni from in there. I get pepperoni from the deli counter. What's, the, the, what's the name of your Al-Qaeda cell? <laughs> what? Well, you get pepperoni at that fucking Subway. Yeah. With nothing. Sometimes. Want, I get mustard. No, I get no mustard. More, no cheese. more pepperoni. No more Subway. It's Unbelievable. Over. You are a Jersey Mike guy now. You're from the East fucking Coast guy. You got to start acting like You got to start eating top-notch food. No more silliness for you. There's a busload of grandmothers that just perished because no of your insubordination. No more. no more of this shit. You're an East Coast guy, bro. You got to right act like an East cliff. Coast guy. But you're a huge fan of that cheese and veggie sandwich thing. No, I don't. No, I don't. I don't go in there. When I'm on the road making six dollars a week, I'm a big fan of it. <laughs> <laughs> Why would I go in there when you go get tub and a sub at fucking uh, the thing? What? You What's go get tub a, and a sub? Tub and a sub is a salad at Jersey Mike's. Oh, okay. So you get the same sandwich without the bread. So don't tell me about calories. I want to lose weight. Nah, fuck that shit. That's poison. That's poison. How many times am I be tough? Fucking. My- and not every rose has its thorn poison. poison. Poison, poison. It's fucking bad for you. It's turkey fucking pastrami. <laughs> it's turkey fucking salami. It's turkey fucking pepperoni. <laughs> what part of that don't you fucking understand? But what's wrong with turkey? Because you want to eat the real shit. You're from the East Coast, guy. You're from Boston. You, you got to start acting like it. 
He eats cheddar cheese. Who eats cheddar cheese on a sandwich? Most people. You're from, no, they don't. <laughs> That's for fucking white Gentiles that eat ranch and they and they believe the reviews to a movie. <laughs> oh, my well, got thick stars. You know, that's what that's for. No more cheddar. American sliced thin. Swiss sliced thin. White. White. The American white. White. Is oh, he don't fucking know. American sliced thin. Land the Lakes. What are you fucking nuts? It's like butter. A little provolone when that cheese melt. That cheddar cheese. Squeeze a pimp on your face. You'll see the cheddar fly out of your fucking face, cocksucker. <laughs> that's what cheddar cheese is. Disgust. Nobody goes, when was the last time you went to a sandwich, a place? Even fucking Subway, they sell cheddar cheese there. No, so. there's a reason, ja, whatever your fucking name is. There's a reason why people, you don't put cheddar cheese on a sandwich. Never. Like, what about never. avocado? Yeah, but if you need it. Like if you're half a fag. <laughs> like if you're gluten-free. Who puts avocado on their fucking sandwiches? When you go to Jersey, is there any fucking sandwich with avocado on it? No. No. Then why would you put avocado on your fucking sandwich? Because we're in California. When you go to Boston, is there avocado? When you go to legal seafood, yeah, I get avocado. No. They look at you and go, "Are you fucking retarded? Are you fucking retarded or just taking fucking lessons?" <laughs> this is every week. When I want to write something funny, I call him and ask him what he ate that day. That's all I got to do is call him. What did you eat today? He told me, I don't remember really. We kind of teased He got mad because I had Korean dumplings. What's wrong with Korean? Because there's 20,000 Chinese places right up here around the corner. Cheddar and every week avocado. his girlfriend talks him into going to some exotic place. It's Johnny <laughs> exotic. It's downtown on yeah, the train. Exotic on the train. <laughs> Again, you're from the East Coast. All right. If you want to take trains, you move to New York. Nobody takes trains. You go right over here. You go to that Chinese place at the corner here. There's a Korean place on Laurel Canyon. You keep it over here. And you take a rickshaw from one to the other. <laughs> That's it. It's over. No more Subway for you. That's it. You've been eating Subway for too long. Your generation's fucking retarded. No more Subway. No more avocado. No more bacon on burgers. What is wrong with you fucking people? That's a double colostopy. What is that called? Like a double... If you wrote a sentence, what is that called? Redundant. <laughs> being redundant? Yeah, yeah, that's being redundant. Redundant. You know, and the shit with the clubs. <laughs> Who eats a club sandwich in New Jersey? With mm -hmm. avocado. You can't order a club what? sandwich on these You just had avocado. a club sandwich. I do not eat a fucking club sandwich. At the baby place. My wife ordered a fucking <laughs> club sandwich. My wife went to the... My wife went to the uh, but it was an East Coast club? Like yeah. It was an East Coast club. Uh, White bread, toasted. It was a BLT club. Ton of, not with ton of mayonnaise. A sourdough. And crispy, almost burnt bacon. Have it. I'll fucking thin stab you. turkey. And lettuce, they squish it tomato, with a toothpick yes. on the top. Triple layer. Well, triple layer. And it was yeah. tight up at the fucking, uh, where the USC, the bowl is, across. They have the kid space. Oh, yeah, yeah. The fucking, the kitchen was tremendous. My wife got that. She's right away. She's a fucking Gentile. Let me get a club sandwich. I was going to smack that. <laughs> but, you know, what are you going to do? <laughs> but then when I saw it, I'm like, holy shit. It looks like an East Coast BLT yeah. with the toothpicks, raw toast. They cut it nice. Then Little I triangles. Go, but that shit you eat, chicken, with man, bacon, I? avocado. I see you. I see you. <laughs> I see you. The other night, listen to what happened. Twice already. A nice, nice people sent us a, a Christmas present. $125 to go eat a fucking, what's the name of the place? A steak place, I forget. Yeah, you forget. Ruth Chris. Oh, that's uh, nice. Both times, I offered them to him and his girlfriend. One night, they were going to get pizza. My girlfriend wanted pizza. And I would smack the fuck out of her. <laughs> That's when I go to her, okay, I'm going to order you pizza, but I'm going by myself because you got to set your marker and enforce it, Lee. You she wait. doesn't like steak. Why would I waste Who gives a oh fuck what God. she likes? <laughs> Who gives a fuck what she likes? They got fucking shrimp there. They got everything. They'd probably make you pizza. They got everything there at <laughs> Ruth Chris. Look at the fucking menu. Go to Ruth Chris. Look at the fucking appetizer menu. They got a, they got, but why would I waste it if she doesn't like it? Why it do you, doesn't matter what she likes. I don't care if she drinks water. As long as she watches you eat the fucking steak. What do you give a fuck? You turn down a pizza free... from Laurel Canyon. He's from the East Coast. We just straighten him out. It's a... Go ahead. It's a... It's yeah. a brick oven place. Yeah, it's a it's brick oven place. Yeah, that's a, pre... you... that's a party fight. You can't... If a guy's saying, let's go get steaks. No! I, I mean... gave him my card. I said, take the card. Take it. Throw a steak down her fucking throat. Uh, let me you still you. haven't used the card? No. He has a card. I said, come get it. Take it out. Yeah. Then I called him again. What are you guys going to do? 
I go, Lee, I, I'm busy in the next couple of weeks. Just come get the car. Take it around. I'm not calling you oh back. Oh, my God. Not, she she doesn't to- like steak. Who, again, <laughs> who gives a fuck what she likes, Lee? When was the last time? When was Why the last waste time? a nice present? Who gives a fuck? Hey, Lee. Then you give her a fucking appetizer. What's the appetizers? Read the appetizers. Do, do you like steak, Lee? I do love steak. Okay, that's all that fucking matters. <laughs> do you do things that she, she likes don't sometimes? Like, no, he does it all the time. Coconut macaroons. One that's more. what I'm saying. I couldn't isn't there, there, a, re- isn't there the a reciprocation? In the morning. Isn't there a reciprocation? No, you you do be the Captain Kirk here. What she Twice likes. Twice he's Rita. already said, well, she doesn't like it. Listen. If you don't like it, I'll drop you off at mom's. I'll go by myself and get a fucking a hundred dollar steak on my own. That's where you call you your boys lay the and you lawn say, down, dog. "You don't lay the law." I don't give a fuck what you like. What's on the menu? What I forget the name of it already. Read the fucking menu, Ruth Chris. <laughs> Read the fucking the thing menu. Let's find it, Ruth Chris. It's delicious. I'm, I'm sure it is. They delicious. pan sear the steaks and we butter. got steak before. I like steak, but I didn't want to waste her gift. What gift? You said it was a gift it's card. Not a gift. You're gonna take her. You gotta throw something down her throat, and then you gotta take. They got fish. They yeah, got they got a lot of good things. Yeah. She don't like none of those fucking main dishes. Read the main dishes to me. Uh, let's see. Read the main dishes. She don't like none of those dishes. That's what you're trying. Barbecue to... shrimp. Okay. Lamb she... chops. Okay. Chicken breast. She don't like none of that either, right? What else don't she like? She hates awesome. What else? <laughs> That's what they have. They have lobster. They got yeah. a lot of stuff. And she don't like none of that. She would rather eat a fucking pizza. No, you have to explain to her what the fuck you're gonna eat tonight. <laughs> For free. For free. A steak dinner for free. Lobster for free. Yeah. That's a travesty of American justice. What did you eat the second time I called? That night. Tell him. I forget what night it was. The second time. Last week when I called. The Chinese place? She wanted to go get Chinese. We went together. Again. It doesn't matter. I like Chinese too. Well, tell the Chinese on your own fucking time. (laughs) Uncle Joey gave me a Ruth Chris. You got to go. You got to go. 100%. You got to go. We're going. That's it. Put your shoes on. Let's go. I don't really think. Night really out. You get to dress think. up a little bit. They it's kind of nice. They got barbecue yeah, shrimp. You're going to like it. This is Ruth Chris. This is white people. <laughs> These are white people. When are you going to be around white? These are people you're going to protect and serve. These are people you got to be around. These are fucking white people. Well, I don't. Get up. You're going. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Get dressed. The f- <sighs> fuck. This is what I got to deal with. This, this is my stepson. This is what God has inherited. <laughs> And he has the ball. But you make these sandwich. rules and then you break them. I don't make no rules that, and break you them. You just said, what is with bacon on sandwiches? And you had you ate a club what, sandwich because that, your wife got before, one. When, before that, when was the last time I ate a club sandwich? I don't know. Never, Lee. BLT is the only thing I ate it with bacon on. You're not a fan of the bacon? I'm a fan of bacon, but not on everything like this new generation. Yeah. You don't need it. It's like a, you don't need it. The double non tundra. If you can, if you can, so you're just saying bacon by itself. I eat bacon. Listen, I'll get Oscar Mayer thin cut bacon. Yeah, I smoke a joint. I eat the whole package if it's fried deliciously. I eat it solo with butter. I'll dip my bacon in butter. Drawn butter. I don't give a fuck what it's like. <laughs> Just on the on the stick. <laughs> I love fucking bacon, okay? One chop of butter, one bite of bacon. <laughs> but this new white America, they think they gotta put bacon on everything. Yeah, it's it's fucking mind boggling. It's a club club. What club? I took a little brown sugar and a little Dijon mustard. He was telling me. I whip it up, put the bacon on a baking sheet, slather that little mixture on the top, 450, come out, bacon sticks. If I told him I made cinnamon glazed bacon, he would come over and let the air out of my tires. <laughs> no, he's just being nice to you. He, <laughs> would you eat? Would you eat Dijon cinnamon bacon? Not a <laughs> Cinnamon, is. brown sugar. Oh, brown sugar. Sorry, cinnamon. I, you don't put cinnamon on bacon. <laughs> <laughs> I miss the East Coast. That's what I'm saying to you, though. That's it. Enough. Yeah. No more of this shit. You should you though. Go back you, to you, East Coast you, fucking eating now. It's an you're, egregious you're a representative, bro. You can't turn into one of these fucking people out here. You gotta go to Ruth Chris. I it's love it. Fucking great. I mean, this fucking guy Astros is do, great too. He won't do nothing. New England Patriots. How long have you guys here? been together? He a probably, year and a half. Yeah, that's oh, it. You that's a long time. People. You gotta start telling them. Listen, this is what's going on. Tonight. Ugg boots, speedos, yeah. and a fucking cake. I'm gonna eat this right now. Well, I don't like. I don't care what you like. This is what we're with doing. a sharpie. I'm the Captain Kirk of this Enterprise. Last time I fucking checked. All right. A sea trident. Last time I checked, I'm the fucking man here. The fuck what you like? That's aviation like. goggles. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Ugg Speedo and Aviation Goggles with a sea trident. That's like it. a fucking champion. <laughs> <laughs> Roll the skates. 
I'm with gonna, sparklers. I, I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to end up sleeping on your couch. You're not going to do nothing. That's the, that's how you get respect. If not, they push you over. Then they'll say, I got no challenge. If you look at, look at fucking your boy. He's got no girlfriend now. Because he's, <laughs> no, you got to fucking step it up. That's a great night on the town. Especially a Latin Chris. woman. You got to step it up, dog. That's you gotta good people watching. The energy yeah. in the place is phenomenal. The service Two is times. top fucking The first notch. time for a pizza, I almost died. Like, my feelings were like a fucking pizza. Right. But can you tell the whole story? At least give me some credit. Yeah, man. We had plans on yeah. pizza. Plans We've changed. been dieting since June, and we wanted pizza. Who gives oh. a fuck? You mean this could have been this your cheat just, meal? This is, this is even worse. Listen to this. Listen to this. Listen to a cheat meal. You took pizza, pizza over a full not, ride to Ruth not, Chris? Not Domino's. It was, but yeah, she doesn't like steak. This is not the East Coast, so you can live without the pizza. I eat pizza every 90 days. It don't matter. I'm not eating East Coast pizza. Yeah. So why am I wasting my calories on West Coast shit pizza? There's no pizza like the one I grew up with, so I refuse to eat it. Nothing. That shit you guys sent me to that, that fucking Laurel Cat was garbage. That ain't no. pizza. That's garbage. We got that's garbage. Garbage. What's, what's, your, what's your spot? That Laurel Daniels. Canyon. That's garbage. It's Riverside garbage. and Laurel Canyon. Garbage. Oh yeah, I think fifty it's fucking bucks. Garbage. Why? It was not fifty bucks. Twenty dish? something bucks. No, it's on deep dish. Yeah, yeah. Please, you really, really <laughs> want to confuse these people? They have a hard time making regular fucking pizza. You want to de- <laughs> deep dish like Chicago? Oh Jesus! Your Christ. brains explode. Yeah, yeah. You're fucking crazy. I asked for Jardinera out here. The guy goes, "What are you talking about?" Yeah, they don't add an Italian deli. So then I go, "All right, well, give me the, uh, give me some beef with uh, the juice on the side. Give me the juice on the side." He goes, "What are you talking about? The beef doesn't have any." Juice. Where was this? Uh, some place out in Encino. Somebody's like, "This is the deli. You got to go there. This is the Italian deli." Is so it where Steve Timon brought you? Uh, no, no, no. It was a pal of mine, a music guy. So I go in there and I go, all right, give me some beef with the ajou on the no, side. He goes, because I wanted to. Place, tell him so you could go. Domingos? Domingos. Oh, that's it's really good. That's We're talking Ventura and Antino? That's oh, yeah, spot. yeah. Meatball they sausage. All yeah. right, let's do it. But if you want a nice ajou sandwich, Roma. Roma, right up the corner. Yeah. We used to always go to Roma. In Hollywood? No, no not a dip. The old, like. The, the you Chicago know sandwich. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, yeah. that's not going to happen. Though. Yeah. <laughs> Even if you go to Joe Montaigne's place, no, they you're going to confuse yeah. the Mexican. His head's going to blow up. Then they got a place down the corner that's supposed to be Chicago. It was garbage, too. I've never had deep dish pizza. I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll overnight some. I'll, where should I sit? We'll figure it out after. I'll overnight you some Lou Malnati's, which I like. Where are you going? It's touristy. No, there's a catalog that I got from Chicago called Taste Chicago where they overnight it to you. And it tastes... When it, when the whenever Bears games are on, I'll I'll get some and I'll you bake them. Forty five minutes comes in the pan. All you got to do is take the pizza out of the pan, lightly oil the pan, put the pizza back in. Forty five minutes of four fifty, call it a day. It's fucking magical. And tastes just like home. Tastes like you're sitting in the restaurant. It's fucking great, and it's not super expensive. You'd think the overnight pizza, you know, like a fucking baller from Chicago, but like a two a two pizza deal is like forty five bucks. That's not that bad. No, it's not that bad. So I do that, I'll get beefs, and then they got hot dog packs. So you steam the poppy seed buns, you throw the sport peppers on there, pop some celery salt, oh, that neon green relish. And Boulder they used to have uh, Mustard's Last Stand. That was a Chicago place. And they put the pickles in there. Yeah, shit, yeah. The peppers. Oh. Googly moogly. <laughs> it's so fucking good. You had a combo, didn't you, when you were in Chicago? Oh. I always get the fucking combo. I'm yeah. going to uh, San Diego this weekend, and Steve Simone has me going to Portillo's on the way back. Oh, yeah. Get the fucking um, cake shake. Did he tell you about that? No. What's that? They throw a piece of chocolate cake in the shake. Oh. And when you're, <laughs> <laughs> when you're drinking right, why it. Why are you going on the way back? Big big chunks of the shake Stop come through the street. Dead. It's only 20 minutes from here. They give you a big white. Oh. Huh? It's Orange County, he It's said. La Hambra. That's La Hambra. Uh, yeah. 30 the minutes from here. Yeah. It's fast. I've been Okay. There. Yeah, cake shake, man. If get you the, order something bad and embarrass me in there, what should I get? Fucking Fine. Paula tell, order something tell me bad what to get. And this is all Paula gets. Get a combo. If she's not gonna get the combo. Go. Let's get in the car. Why are you wasting my time? Let's just gotta go get a burrito because you're wasting my time with yeah. that shit. This is what she needs to eat from now on. Not your Chipotle chicken from fucking Jersey Mike's. You got to tell this is what you need to eat. You're from the East Coast. You're going to marry me. I'm from the East Coast. This is what you got. You can't be eating that shit around me. No tofu. None of that shit. You're with me. You got to eat a beef sandwich with the sausage. What's wrong with tofu? It's either beef <laughs> or sausage. If she says I don't like it, then let's get back in the car. What are you you're wasting about? my time. What's wrong you're with tofu? Embarrass me in here. I just like it's that. like having a tractor trailer load of dicks slam into your mouth. That's what's wrong with tofu. I just like seeing his face turn red. Unless that's a 
a good thing for you. At which point, I mean the opposite of that. <laughs> it's taken me 12 years to take my wife back east, and I've already told her when we go in November, this is what you could eat and this is what you can't eat. If you order this shit, you're going to embarrass me. I'll give you an elbow right there. <laughs> <laughs> you think I'm kidding you? You order fettuccine Alfredo on that white from shit, the rope I will with fucking a super strangle you. Snooker. You understand me? <laughs> And when I'm in the East Coast, you order... But 18 year old Alfredo's white? Yes, you order the proper <laughs> shit. Nobody fucking Italian eats fettuccine Alfredo. Uh, okay. That's a dish invented for Gentiles. You got to get the combo with provolone. You can get red sauce with jardinera on it. Or they, you could call it with hot, dipped, with a hot dog on the side with everything. <laughs> yeah, you're going deep, though. And then you get a, a cake shake. Oh, oh shit. Shit. I'm, I'm surprised and, and, you don't have a problem with the cake shake. And if you're if you if you're in the pocket and you're ready to go for gold, okay. you split a euros with her. After it's a, and you do the cake shake is the dismount. So you want to start with a combo, then you do a, a hot dog like a like a like a sorbet to clean the palate. <laughs> then you chop the euros, gyros if you're from New York and Jersey, and then you do the cake shake for the dismount. And that's all Portillo's? Then you do a lap around the fucking restaurant screaming, I am a fucking champion. I am a descendant from Zeus, sent back from the fucking future to show everyone here how it's done. Sounds good. Party's over, though, for a while. <laughs> what else is off the limits in New York? Anything stupid. <laughs> <laughs> you need to have your own cooking show. No Korean dumplings, <laughs> none of that stupid. shit. Welcome back to nothing stupid. Hey, back to fucking, back to the goods. No papaya dogs. You eat a papaya dog when you're in New York? With that sad bread. I'm a sad yeah, bread guy yeah. from old school. What's that place on 57th, the cart with the uh, shawarma? Those guys, they got the yellow shirts on. You know what I'm talking about? I don't know. Like I don't 57th know fucking and sad 5th. Bread. I don't know nothing. He doesn't yeah. eat shawarma. It's I don't a, eat shawarma, dog. No, that's a that cart, though. The line's down the fucking block. I don't know. You know what I love not. in New York is the... I don't mix and match. Candied fucking uh, cashews, those peanuts, the smell of that in the I winter. I don't stop with those people either. They're filthy. Those animals. look disgusting. Oh, yeah, they, they, they smell good, but they look like they're like I get dirty. The cashews, are, yeah, they're, they're horrible. They're filthy. I got on 42nd Street, I get Sabret hot dogs, and then there's this other place. There's these filthy people, and they got those steak on a the stick. They marinate and put yeah, them on yeah, the yeah, grill. Yeah. They give you a piece of white bread. I'll eat 10 of those motherfuckers in New York City. That's it. No subway, no fucking. Well, yeah, not chain. New York. No chain, no chain pizzas, no chain nothing. They have a lot of chains in like in like I hate Times Square. That's great. It's really, disgusting. You don't eat, nobody eats in Times Square. Only stiffs. Nobody goes to Times Square and eats. What do you think of Lombardi's? So don't worry about it. You're not gonna be there. I don't even know Lombardi's. Lombardi's is over on Spring and Mott in Little Italy. Who the fuck knows? I'm not going into the city. Coal fired. There's only two places left that do coal fire. That's One's great. like a hipstery place and the other's... That's great. <laughs> I just need pizza from Roma's and I'll be just fine. Yeah. They've been there for 40 years. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what I don't. Mean. If it ain't broke. You know, they got stromboli. They got Holy shrimp parmesan. Shit, Who makes man. a shrimp parmesan? Nobody. Roma's has been there. Somebody took a picture last week and they said, I've been coming to Roma's every fucking week. Since I was nine, and I'm 50-something, a kid from my hometown. Go to Roma's for pizza, Rudy's for calamari or spaghetti, or whatever the fuck you want in that realm. I go for Chinese, a chance. What do you do, Fiori's in Jersey? You don't need to go nowhere. If it's not my neighborhood, in my You're not going. I go in there for 50 years. I, I trust this place. I don't need to go into the city to be cool, to drop a name. Well, I don't like to hear Fiori. I don't need to do that. The city's completely different. Where do you like to perform when you're in New York? Gotham. Yeah? Gotham. I don't like moving around. I move around here. Yeah. You're always in traffic here. I'm going to go to New York. Well, there's a, a slice of pizza in Brooklyn. Listen, that's what, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. There's a slice of pizza in Jersey right by my house. I've been going there for 50 years. It's fucking delicious. I haven't had Stromboli in 20 yeah. years. Yeah, you're not because you're not going to get it, you yeah. know. It's just I'm old-fashioned. I'm old-fashioned, and that's why I use blue cheese with my wings. I wouldn't even know what ranch is. I don't want ranch in my table. If I was a restaurant owner, I wouldn't allow ranch in my restaurant because I don't want the people that eat that shit in my restaurant. Do you follow me? Like, if you eat ranch, I don't want you in my. I don't. Want, I'd rather you not come in my establishment. They gave it to you at the comedy store, and I had to take it out of the out of the tray before they handed it to you because you would have thrown a panic attack. No, I just don't. You know, it's like if you put ranch with wings, you've got it. You've got life completely wrong. <laughs> You've got life completely fucking wrong. That does kind of suck when you call and get wings and they say, I'll say like extra blue cheese. 
and then it's ranch. And right there you go, listen, let's cancel the order because there's no reason to get it. If you, had, if you could choose the type of blue cheese, do you go with the blue cheese that's just straight creamy or with the crumble? I want the crumbles because yeah, yeah. the wing has to have the crumble. When you yeah, bite yeah, into yeah. the wing, and you, you got to bite into that thing, blue yeah. cheese. That's yeah, yeah. the whole fucking patois. Yeah. Same thing with the celery. You're dipping that fucking celery in there. get a little in nugget in there. Oh, my God. That's every fucking celery stick has to have a piece of nugget in it. First time I hear ranch, like the Irvine Improv Ranch. What are you talking about? I don't even want to perform here. I don't even fucking want to perform here. This is embarrassing. Ranch. Ranch anywhere is just... If you have ranch in your establishment, I don't want to do business with you because I know the type of person you are. <laughs> what does that entail? The type of what is, what is the ranch? <laughs> I don't like blue cheese. Yeah. You know the ranch people. All the ranch people are the same. They're all nosy and <laughs> like fucking, nosy. you know, they're all fucking like. He won't let somebody cheapish. at the table get it with him. No, go somewhere else, bro. <laughs> go somewhere else. You know better. You did. You told somebody not to sit next to you on Southwest because they had food. Yeah. What do you mean? They were ordering food? Yeah, some fucking filthy fucking idiot. Some chick that thought she was cool. That was smacking her boyfriend around to do everything. And, and I was sitting in this thing, so I had two seats here. First of all, I don't want a middle seat. Why do you want to sit here? The rest of the plane is open. It's like when you're in a restaurant. You're sitting with your family, and the whole restaurant's empty. And, and, they, they, yeah. and they sit people next to you. Why would you do that? Get them the fuck out of here. Get them out of here. That's why I don't go to that place in Burbank no more, Morton's. Because they always put yeah. people next to you. Bro, the place is empty. Get them out of here, bro. I don't want people next to me. You know, at a movie theater, they don't sit next to me. I don't give a fuck what the best seats are. There's a seat everywhere. Get the fuck out of here. Want nobody next to me. Southwest, you come in, the plane is empty. You want to sit here with food. They came in with, look at us with coffees and food. The poor husband, the, 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 that jerk off. <laughs> and she's like walking around with like a fake fur. And I'm like, you're not sitting here. You you're not Vegas? sitting here. No, I was coming back. Uh, not sitting here. I refuse to let you fucking sit here. I want food in my fucking aisle. <laughs> Call the stewardess. Besides, there's open seats. Yeah. I don't want somebody in the fucking middle. Bringing in that stuff. And she sat with somebody with two people in the seat, and I sat here with the whole thing open. And there was a bunch of seats open. If you're on Southwest and you're sitting next to somebody and the plane's empty, you're a fucking asshole. <laughs> Get up. I don't want nobody fucking next to me. No, never. Yeah. Never. At a restaurant, if it's empty, go. Go. I don't want, you know. I don't get that fucking thing. I don't get it. I love kids, but you know when you go out, if it's adults out and you're sitting and like every time, if the, you're like, oh sweet, it's empty, we'll be able to talk, we can hang out, breathe a little bit. A fucking kindergarten comes in and they sit them right next to you, and they're going bananas. Move to the other side. You got? Why would you do that? I don't understand. And I've been in the restaurant industry fucking eight nine years before I started other shit. It's like you never do that. I don't understand the logic behind that. Lee, get it together, Lee. No more subway. Jersey Mike's. Okay, it's good. I like Jersey, Jersey Mike's. Jersey Mike's. And if you're worried about your diet, you get the regular turkey and provolone with lettuce and tomato. Boom. And they got wheat bread and mayonnaise, light mayonnaise for you. You like light mayonnaise? I'm not. I don't like that shit. I'm just saying for you. I don't like mayonnaise. Just in case. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Just in case. You take sandwiches really seriously. <laughs> I what? take food really seriously. That's why I'm 300 pounds. Not because I'm fucking around or, you know, I will ne like never. Like I just, a couple months ago, Doug, this is how crazy I am. I had a producer that wanted to meet me. And I go, okay, where do you want to meet? He goes, I'll call you when I get lunch and we'll meet. This guy made a mistake. He was a guy when he went to that Thai restaurant. When he called me, he goes, I'm at the Thai restaurant. Come on over. I go, ah. I don't do Thai, brother. He goes, then come on in. I go, I don't even sit at those fucking places. <laughs> All right, I'm not going in there. I know a Thai chick. She was filthy. She had bugs in the house. Listen, I, I just don't want to go in there. He couldn't believe it. He couldn't, but like he called me, went out to a different place. He took me to the Jew place where they sell machine guns. Aroma. Aroma on Sunset, the best. Best, the best aroma. What are you talking Next about? Next time, you never take him out there, right? No. Why I, would you? Why would you? Why, why would you? Why would you? Why you, would you? You get mad at me for going to Hollywood. Why would you fucking take her there? <laughs> they got hummus, and they got great bread, and they got Jew food. Why would you take her there? Tell me why. Okay. 
It's no pizza. You better fucking take it out before the next week. Okay. You better take it. I don't give a fuck about Korea food. We're going to Rome to hang out with some Jews. I don't go to Hollywood that often. You're going to start fucking going. But you'll go downtown like a fucking half a Momo. Let me go downtown. You haven't taken the Roma yet. I, I haven't been to Roma. You're a fucking steak with the fucking steak french fries. Have you been to a Roma? It's good. Oh. Oh. It's just a ton of food. The salmon salad for yeah. lunch. They'll fuck you up in there. The fucking steak on steak fries. They have a cut up steak they give you on steak fries. They got this great bread they get from Israel with butter on it. That I had's good. God damn. They got all that juice. I'll food. try it. I've never been there. <laughs> no, because Yelp. <laughs> Let's see what Yelp says. Maybe they'll take an Uber. <laughs> Maybe they have a deal with Uber. We could go on Uber and go to fucking Yelp. <laughs> Millions Yelp. of people use Yelp, and, and you're the only person who has a problem with it. We go Yelp and Uber because I go by love. <laughs> I don't need some fucking strange. I'm not gonna but how do you find strange. places? I already I find them myself. I don't need some fucking dumb stranger that lives in this area to tell me that I, I went to this Chinese place it was exquisite no it's not East Coast so how exquisite can the fucking be they don't have an egg roll Where's, yeah that's what I was going to say where you go for your egg roll I had to stop yeah I had to stop the green apple that's, that's yeah that's what I was going to say yeah that's, that's the closest yeah, 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 that's, yeah, yeah. No. that's an explosion <laughs> they put a bunch of shit in the thing and it explodes <laughs> you know what I get when I go there what do you get the French filet mignon. That's what I get with the asparagus. How delicious is that? That's not fucking around. How the fuck Where's you go this? to a Chinese... No, little, why, a nice why would little you kick? go? Isn't it the I fuck? told you 20 times about that In place. The lunch you didn't specials. tell me the name of the place. Chinese, it's downtown. Green Apple. Yeah, no, it's uh, fucking great. Because she found the place downtown. <laughs> Listen, shut the fuck up. I'm going to drive downtown because you found the place. I found the fucking place, too. I'm Ventura, down the block from fucking Jerry's. Okay. I told you yeah. this three months ago. Huh? Well, we go to this place. It's across from... Uh, then you go tell them. Then you go to Santa Monica for dumplings, didn't you? Because you found the place on Yelp, didn't you? Santa Monica like, oh, was yeah. the cooking class you yeah, had. No, no. But then you went down there for the fucking dumplings, too, one time. And it wasn't that good. Would you do a little serve oh, job? Yeah. <laughs> you could have gone over here, dog. You could have gone that's right the, here. That's the best thing they got, for right sure. There. What's that? The, the filet the with filet the... Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't matter. It's so fucking good. Doesn't matter. Good. This food sucks if you're from fucking the East Coast. You can't fall into this league. Cannot fall into you can't be taking rides around fucking town. You don't have that time. We're fucking professionals here. You're coming over, I'm taking the studio and we're going back to the house, you're putting the bikini on, and we're going to work. What's all this drum? We're putting put the, the bikini on and we're going to work, dog. Going to work. I'm putting you to work. What the fuck? <laughs> You've been studying all week, it's time to work, Jack. Everybody wants to fucking die and go to heaven. Right or wrong. You told me yourself, you want to have sex. Hell Why yeah. do you get involved? <laughs> so when you're sitting in Koreatown eating Aren't you just staring at it going, I can't wait to fuck you, but now it's another hour before I get home on the train. Right or wrong? You just sit there really enjoying yourself. <laughs> They're good, yeah. Like really enjoying yourself. When I take my wife on it, the whole time I'm looking at her like, <laughs> I'm going to take you home and fucking punch you and do everything to you, you dirty bitch. You think I'm worried about That's why I don't get myself involved in that predicament of an hour and a half meal. That's why everything's delivery. <laughs> everything's delivery. <laughs> I'm going fucking downtown. It's Friday us. night. It's dick night. <laughs> I'm fucking going downtown. <laughs> I haven't seen your fucking week. You want to take another two hours out of my life to go get fucking dumplings? Really? 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 Friday night is dick night. <laughs> dick night at the house. And guess what Saturday night is? Dick night? Dick night again. <laughs> See no Friday. Going on. After you dick, <laughs> then you go to the comedy store later. <laughs> because you got your dick in there. It doesn't matter. You want to laugh, laugh. Go ahead. What do I get? <laughs> <laughs> then you take him back and give him another stabbing. <laughs> right or wrong? What do you care? What do you care? What the fuck? Dick night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> gotta do some shout outs here. <laughs> on it! <laughs> Optimization to the fucking max. You understand me? You want to be the night. best? You want to have dick night in your house? <laughs> Go to <laughs> honored.com. They have a tremendous product called Alpha Brain. Nootropics. It'll fucking put you on a different planet. And here's the beauty part. It's a 100% money back guarantee. You don't like it. You've seen fucking stars. Your dick don't get hard. You call on it. You send it back. No questions asked. They don't have to send we'll it back. We'll send you a check. You don't even have to send it back. All right? That's a fucking 100% guarantee. Wow. Who does that for you now? 
Does that dumpling place fucking do that, cocksucker? Fuck no. Go to honor.com and press in. Church. And get 10% <laughs> off. off your first fucking order. And stay on it and you get another 10% off. And tell them I sent you, you get another fucking 10% <laughs> off. But if, you got, if you're a Jew, you'll get 0% fucking interest, okay? Number two, Iron Dragon TV. It's a real cool channel. It streams tremendous classic martial art films, whether you're into the Ip Man series. And new martial arts And films. new martial art films and mafia. And they have on it workout films. They got a ton of stuff and they're growing daily. Every week, Dave Foley adds new fucking movies to that. They're also going to have the new 4K technology. This is tremendous opportunity for you. You just look at me going, but Joey... I don't like Chinese fucking food. I don't give a fuck if you don't like Chinese movies. You're getting two free fucking movies for free, right? Yeah. Put your name. What are they pressing the box? Joey. Joey. You get two fucking free Chinese movies. When was the last time you watched a Chinese fucking movie? That's right. Go to Iron Dragon TV right fucking now. Look at what they got. Look at the webpage. Guarantee you're going to love it. Okay? They got Jackie Chan. They got, who's the other guy? Sonny fucking Chiba. They're not fucking around. Go to Iron Dragon TV right now and press in. Joey. And get two free films, two free rentals, absolutely free on Uncle Joey. You're sitting there going to myself, my balls itch. You know why your balls itch? Because your underwear are fucking disgusting. You've had them on for a day and a half. You got pee in them. You got shit stains in them. It looks like somebody shot a musket in them. They're disgusting, those white fucking things. Not to mention it's 2015. I got the solution. Me on the fucking underwear. Even, they even make me look fucking sexy. My flat fucking ass is banging in those fucking things. It cups your nutsack. I got a pair on right now. They feel fucking tremendous. If I start, you can sniff my hand right now. And then I'll stick it in my thing, juggle my nuts, pull it out. And let you sniff it again. There's no difference. You understand me? Because the material, it keeps the sweat. I don't know what it does. <laughs> it just fucking pulls the sweat from the nutsack. And your nutsack this is, is made What you're fresh. saying is advanced nutsack technology. Technology. No stink nutsack. Because who wants when I had the surgery, nutsack and dick Don't say a fucking word, Chinese dumpling <laughs> man, cocksucker. God knows what your undies look like. I have good undies. Yeah, I know. Fucking white cotton things with streaks no. and fucking. What color undies you got? Black. Uh, yeah, I you think better so. wear black, you fuck. I forget what color I have you on. You got right sperm now. in there and little fucking. You have sperm on your helmet and the little cup. <laughs> what? <laughs> you think I leave the house with sperm on my dick? <laughs> Go to meundies.com right now. Press in. Joey. Joey in the box and get 20% off your first order and the deliver for free anywhere in Canada and the U.S. And the U.S. That's me on these right now. Go to me on these. Look at their catalog. They got girl underwear, they got boy undies. Don't say that no more. They got mad. <laughs> <coughs> you know they got they what got they nice looking about? undies because last week you said they got boy underwear was, I don't fucking know man undies so, so fucking some gay guy fucking hit me up and said Lee wants to suck my dick but he doesn't want no dumpling nuts like, I don't fucking know anyway <laughs> it's complicated go to, go to meundies.com right now look at the great selection of men and women's underwear they have and go crazy it's a tremendous product that fits great it feels great they're comfortable I feel like I'm fucking floating go to meundies right now and receive 20% off your first order and Free motherfucking delivery. Who does that for you? Me and this. You're sitting there going, boy, I'm getting fat. Boy, this resolution ain't working. But at the same time, you're eating some fucking shitty potato chips. That shit stops right now. You know why? Because Uncle Joey's coming in strong for the fucking new year. By now, you've already tapped on your resolution. I don't give a fuck. You know why? Because I got the best thing going. Naturebox.com. They're delicious, nutritious snacks sent directly to your house. Just like me on these... Just like fucking on it. I don't fuck around. I send shit right to your fucking house. You don't need to go downtown. You don't need to get on the fucking train. Nothing. You just fucking go to naturebox.com, press, get five different fucking snacks, and guess what? They're free the first time. Four medium-sized bag, one big-sized bag. I'm telling you, from the fucking cocoa almonds to the... To the to sriracha the, cashews. To the sriracha cashews, Ooh. which everybody's fucking eating now. Those things are delicious. To the fucking... Uh, Kettle kernels. Kettle kernels to the sweet and sour, whatever. They have a fucking, uh, what's the trail mix? They have a a, a trail mix that is so fucking delicious with big pieces of chocolate kisses in it. You got to order that shit right now. Listen, I could talk about this shit for hours. Who needs the aggravation? You're probably a little stoned. You want to go to bed. You want to whack off. Go to naturebox.com and press in. (laughs) Joey. And get 20, how much? No. Free, Free box. Free. Free. Who's better than me? (laughs) <laughs> I give you free 20% off, two free movies, and 10% off vitamins. You don't get that nowhere. 
please go to naturebox.com and support them. It's a free fucking box. You're wasting your fucking time listening to this podcast if you don't get those fucking nature box. Go to me on these. Get some underwear. Go to Iron Dragon TV. It's the best thing you've ever done. And on it.com. Tremendous optimization. Mick. Yeah. Mick Bettencourt from the Mick Bettencourt podcast. How many shows you do a week? One. Just one. Everyone drops Monday. <clears throat> New episode every Monday. We're on episode 83, 84 drops next week. Why you got to piss me off, Wayne? What happened? Huh? With that Subway sandwich. Why you got to get me stuff? Still. I'm sorry. I apologize. No more Subway. For my lunch choice. No more Subway for you. You got a foot long, didn't you? Hell yeah. Wait till that piece of shit comes out of your ass. <laughs> what did it smell like? Death. Just take it out and look at it. It don't even look like real shit. It looks like turkey shit. That's what it probably Even is. the shit isn't real? No, it's turkey shit. What's the, what's the, you're lucky I love you. What do you got planned? So you, when are you leaving? Thursday night. Thursday night. When are you coming back? Sunday afternoon. Look at you. Uh, Three-day weekend. Everybody's rocking down there. Yeah, it's her birthday. Oh, I, I could just imagine. <laughs> she probably wants to eat here, wants to eat there. What happened? <laughs> There's no hotels in North Hollywood this fucking weekend? Why would I take her to North Hollywood? Because it's a beautiful town. That's why. <laughs> you get a review. She can see the mountain. That fucking Holiday Inn is 200 a night. And like the car dealership. What are, you doing? what are you doing? Let me know what's the week it entail. Let me. Let me oh, she has a couple of taco places. We're gonna go to Steve's friend by the comedy store. Okay. What else? I know there's a by the way. No, man. it's it's a, a bunch of just cool restaurants. Cool restaurants. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. She went there for college. She likes it down there. <laughs> <laughs> you ate the fucking crepes, just so everyone knows. He makes fun of me for crepe class, but you ate. You, you Did ate. you have you made crepes since then? No. Then what was the fucking use? <laughs> Again, you want to fucking you went to the other shit, the macaroon class. How many macaroons have you made since then? None. Okay, and then what's the other class you went to? Just crepe. Okay, so it was a waste of fucking time because ain't nobody gonna cook. You don't fucking cook on the weekend. Lee, you all Lee, fuck, you, uh, did you go to a macaroon he class did at eight and in the a crepe class? A week and later, you wouldn't go to Ruth Chris to, to get free steaks. Can you imagine this? This is what I'm talking about. <laughs> and he went to the macaroon class at eight in the morning. Not eight in the morning. Do you? Morning. Do you? I mean, because you can share Gmail calendars. Does she give you an opportunity to schedule time to see your balls? Do Not yet. Get, that's on the that's on the agenda. Do you get the? That is insane, though. That you would do that. You're that you're it's that fun. caring. Yeah. Yet you wouldn't go. I mean, let, do you not like steak? I love steak. I've been, I've been, I've gotten steak with him a few times. I don't understand. I don't understand. But they, they sent us in a very nice gift. I didn't want to waste it if she didn't like it. She gets her steaks well done. Why am I going to go to that? Well, he, he you say fuck what she gets. She that night you, she wasn't getting dick. She was no dick night. That's a no dick night. She was gonna sit there and watch you eat a steak. That's where you would Maybe if she was good, you let her smell it. <laughs> In your me undies. Can you imagine that? Two times I called him, dog, come over. No, we want pizza. We got a diet and pizza. Now again, if it was pizza sent out from New York, I could see it. Oh shit, Lee, you're getting some pizza sent out. Yeah. It's a special that occasion. Fucking vomit he got from Laurel Canyon that he that made. That wasn't me, vomit. He made me go get it. I did not I mean you asked me where it was and I told oh, you it's it, good pizza. It was great pizza. Is it as good as a pizza in your neighborhood? Oh, how would I know? You go to fucking Little Caesars and get I don't go to They didn't have Little Caesars That's in Boston. What they have. What did you get? Tell me you went to next pizza and no you didn't. I went to Sudbury Pizza. What is the it? town where I grew up, Sudbury. Is it good? Did you take Paula there? No, and we didn't go. It was snowing well, when I was back there. Why wouldn't you take Paul? Because it's a 45 minute time? drive in the snow. I thought why it was in your whole f- fucking town. Yeah, but my mom lives near Boston now. She moved out. Oh, okay. From where I right. lived. Did, did they have any pizza in Boston you took it to? Yeah. What's Which one? We, uh, we My favorite place in Boston is Ernesto's because I lived in a, in the North End, the Italian right, section. Right, right. It's a small place. They do the, the big slices you like. They just put it in for like two minutes, let it heat up. It's great. Did you take it there? No, we what, didn't go. What? We didn't. We were there for like four days. Oh. That's the pizza you take it to, and then when you bring it here, you go, "We ain't eating this shit out of here no more." That's the pizza you should have taken it to Ernesto's and go, "This is pizza." So don't ever ask again. Like if it's not Ernesto's, I'm not fucking eating it. I'm a East Coast guy. I'm to the bone here. No California kitchen. No nothing. When you go to fucking Ernesto's, you're gonna look me in the face and tell me that Laurel Canyon is as good as Ernesto's. No. What is it compared to Ernesto's? Tell me the truth. If Ernesto's is a 10, what is that Laurel Canyon place? Six a and a half, seven. Four. No, not a four. A four. 
No more pizza league. That's You've never it. been to... I don't need to fucking go. <laughs> You're just making up numbers that make your <laughs> argument work. We all have an Ernesto in every neighborhood. Yeah. And nothing that you're ever going to eat is going to match up to that. So that I can't give... I, I'm not going to have pizza for the rest of my life? Because never. Because it's not going to... Never. The only place I eat pizza is at that mall. <laughs> that fucking... <laughs> Joe's Pizza from New York. Oh, yeah, yeah. In Santa Monica, right that? on the... Yeah, no, yeah. right up here. In the they, but they just built one. That's the same guy that yeah. started in Santa Monica. That's good. That's where you fucking go for a slice. Where? Joe's. The Joe's. Not Joe Peeps. Joe's. No, Joe Peeps is fucking puke, too. Yeah, Joe's. Oh, my God. I was hungry. I was in acupuncture when I went to Joe Peeps. I fucking shit in the backyard. <laughs> I mean, it went right through the sauce, went right from my mouth, right to my ass. Like, I threw away both slices. Yeah. That's how bad Joe Peeps was. I threw away both fucking slices. Lee. They used artificial cheese. I could tell cheap cheese. That's what they don't know out here. That's the difference. It's that fucking the cheese, cheese is fucked up and the water is fucked that up. The cheese is fucking up. Do you, is, does water make that big of a difference? Because you always see the they bring in New yeah. York water for bagels and stuff. But that lasts for a week. And then they've realized they have people who buy bagels at a store from the East Coast. And they go, why am I doing this? That's why all those people... When I first moved here, the pizza was in Redondo Beach next to the Comedy Magic Club. That was the end-all, be-all. That was the word. They have gallons of water from Jersey. But then I was talking to the guy one day. He goes, well, what? These fucking Gentiles will eat fucking Domino's. Yeah. And they're from the East Coast because it's ten ninety nine a fucking pizza. You know? No. This is what you get if you're from there. I went to Long Island one time on the elevator. There was a kid with a Domino's thing. I had to control myself. <laughs> eating this fucking kid. Just swinging at him and his parents for being so fucking stupid and fucking ignorant. You understand me? What about the guy at Domingo's who got like a turkey sandwich? Oh, I was going to beat him too. A white dude with slippers on. <laughs> he got a fucking turkey on white. You could have done this at Subway or fucking Ralph's. Boar's head, please. No, he didn't even get boar's head. I, I don't want to pay the extra premium. I want the regular turkey. Listen, get the fuck out of here. Go to fucking Subway and eat that shit. I love you, cocksuckers. Buffalo, Helium, see you this weekend. Columbus, see you the following week. We'll be back Monday with a new fantastic podcast. We're doing mushrooms on Monday. We're getting fucked up with my man Lee. It's over. We're doing mushrooms on Monday? Fuck yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mick, for coming yeah, on. I love you. Please support yeah, Mick. Mick, Mick Bettencourt. Follow him on Twitter. What is it? At Mick Bettencourt. And follow him. Go to his shows. He's a solid dude. I love him. He's like my brother. So you, were, you were just on Mick Bettencourt. Until That's right. Yeah, yeah. That's a couple right. episodes ago. That's Thank right. you. Thank you. All right. This show is sponsored by Nature Box. Uh, don't forget to go to naturebox.com and sign up to get your free no sample more subway. box. No more Subway. Only Naturebox. Get your free Naturebox sample box of great tasting, healthy snacks. Forget the v- vending machine and Subway and start snacking smarter with delicious treats like barbecue kettle, cor- kettle kernels. Go to naturebox.com slash joey. That's naturebox.com slash joey. For men's and women's underwear, go to meundies.com slash joey and get 20% <laughs> off of your first order. And free shipping in the United States and Canada. Go to onnit.com and use code word CHURCH to get 10% off of all of their optimization products, like Alpha Brain and New Mood. And go to irondragontv.com and use code word JOEY to get two free rentals of all of their great martial arts movies. <laughs>